further. Explore the trails less traveled. And reach your destination quicker with King's new Toyota Sequoia 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with optional wide-range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sequoia kit today. We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? The ultimate adventure tool with all the storage to hold even more adventure tools. The all-new Adventure Ready Bronco Sport. Finishing touches of any off-road vehicle are the things you add to make it your own. That's why we've developed a full collection of over 70 Polaris engineered accessories specifically designed for Pro-R. Polaris. Think outside. Ensenada, for those who are looking to expand their culinary horizons, a place where the adventures of the sky, valleys, and oceans come together. Ensenada, the capital of Mexican wine. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome uh, here. My name is Austin Fish Farner. I am joined today by Nick Eisenhower, and we are here to bring you guys the Method Race, Race Wheels San Felipe 250 Qualifier. 
This is going to be awesome today. We got a lot of cars going out on course. Uh, we got cars on course right now that are going out on their practice laps. So if you guys were seeing some feeds earlier of some cars on course, don't worry, you didn't miss anything. The time laps haven't started yet. Everybody gets a practice lap. You get to go check out the course. You got to mark the GPS. This is the first time these guys have seen the course. There was no pre-running on this course. So this morning is the first mm -hmm. time you get yep. to see it. And uh, we're going to be bringing you guys lots of live action today. We got some drone cameras. We got a start finish camera mm -hmm. that's up. And uh, yeah, what do you think, Nick? This is going to be exciting today. I'm super excited. We have a couple in cars too, something to mention, which will be exciting to tag into. Hopefully, we can get that up and going. But yeah, dude, there is an insane amount of spec truck. I think that's like the main thing to talk about right now, not just coming from a spec truck driver personally, but like <laughs> there's 45 spec trucks. There's 44 on this entry, and we just got word that there's one more that late entered. So 45 spec trucks going around, and that's an insanely stacked field. That, that is a huge field. You know, last year at this very race one year ago was the most that we've ever had, and it was 43. Mm -hmm. That was the most at any race ever that started. There was 43 starters last year. So we got, like you said, there's 45 on the entry list. Let's see how many starters there are. So we just need to have one more <laughs> than last year, and we got a new record that's this it. year for the that's amount it. of spec trucks started. Yeah, it's very impressive, and it's exciting to see, you know, uh, this new format with qualifying before every race. I think it's a great deal. I think it's awesome. And it kind of takes a little bit of stress off the race and allows you to kind of focus on your qualifying a little bit more. And then, you know, the race is what it is and it doesn't really tie you to your next race. So exactly. qualifying is going to be wild and fun, I think. Yeah. And, and like you said, we're first, we're going to start with the spec trucks today. They get to go first. And then after them, we're going to have the big boys, the trophy trucks. Mm -hmm. I think we have the, the trophy truck start order that we can show you guys later. Now, this order is going to be after the spec trucks go. Then the trophy trucks are going to go, and they're going to get to do a sight lap as well. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be, we're going to be here for a while today. And, you know, if you're not awake yet, don't worry. You, you can always rewind and watch. That's it. And the big boys are going to be coming up early this afternoon, probably right after lunch or so. Yeah, <laughs> sounds about right. Yeah, I mean, you try to get through 45 spec trucks is going to take a good amount of time. Our qualifying laps, what, 5.1 miles or something of sorts? Yeah, it's just, just over, over five miles. miles. Yeah, so, you know, it's going to take them a good amount of time to get around that, call it just under four minutes probably right at four minutes i mean do you have a prediction as to what you think a five mile qualifying lap will be i mean probably going to be not quite 60 miles an hour just from looking at the uh, the map of the course there is quite a few turns in it so mm -hmm. it's going to be a little technical maybe i don't know like six six minutes you think something? six six ish six, six to seven i don't know yeah, it's going to be right. it's going to be hard to tell once we see a couple cars go on it you know yeah. we, we haven't seen anything ourselves yet either this is the first time we're seeing the course yeah, this morning so true. it's kind of hard to guess but here here's the starting grid right here so first uh in qualifying mm -hmm. once they go is going to be thor herps in the 219 and then we have ej herps so we got uh, two of the herps trucks one going yep. one and two in qualifying. right off the bat yeah well, yep, and yep. i think those are some of the cars we'll probably have some live uh, in-car footage mm -hmm. from too so that should be exciting what do you think they got some side bets going on between ej and thor oh i'm sure they do i'm sure all the guys in the shop do too as well see who can get whose truck's going to get to the front and who's going to you know see where they all stack up yeah yeah so it's almost a little disadvantage because if they were spread out a little bit they could watch each other's in-car camera True. to see what the course looks like yeah right but ej is not going to be able to watch thor's ca uh, camera because yeah. he's going to be going right behind him yeah realistically so. they might end up being on the course at the same ish time you know send one car a couple minutes send the next car so yeah there's absolutely no yeah. opportunity for something like that to happen exactly so then behind the two herps we're going to have santiago creole in the 260 then we have mason cullen in the 207 Cade Garcia, Matt Winslow, Chase Swanson, Vincent Munoz, old 1450 That's guy, it. right? Yep, Got to give a is. shout out uh -huh. to the 1450 guys always. Yep. Then uh, Bryce Swaim and Ryan Hancock, the Alexander Ford truck. So that is the top 10 uh, starting grid for the trophy truck specs. And then this afternoon, here's your top 10 uh, trophy truck start order. Who do we have at the top there? Dude, this man is on fire. Adam Householder. I think he's been winning everything he's been touching right now. Qualifying great, finishing great. His program is dialed in and tuned up. Adam Householder in the number 24, uh, followed by another Herps, Tim Herps in the 19. Um, and then number three, this is an exciting one, Christopher Pulvardi. He's an old spec truck guy, That's right? It, well, not yep. old, but he's, yeah, he's a he, young, 19 years he's old young or something. spec truck guy, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And this is his debut in his all wheel drive Mason truck. So uh, I think we're all pretty excited. I'm sure we've all been watching his pre run videos and stuff on YouTube. And, you know, they really put a lot of work into their program, and he, he, puts, the, he puts the effort to you know get the results and i'm excited to see how this pans out for him in this in the trophy truck class yeah and then we so. have uh, mike walser after him we got sam baldy and then we have you see that red number one so bryce menzi is normally number seven but now he gets to run a red number one because mm -hmm. he won the championship last year yeah i think that's super cool you know it's like a motocross thing back in the day you get to run the red or the like a different red color back plate, plate or yeah. what have you, you know like um i think it's definitely very very cool and you know, it's a lot of pressure on him holding that number one plate, and everybody knows everywhere he goes, he's got a big target on his back. And, yeah. you know, I mean, if anybody can, you know, 
hold up to the stress of off-road racing and all that, it's Bryce Menzies, who's oh. a real professional at this stuff, so I don't think he's too worried about it. Oh, for sure, for sure. And then uh, after Bryce, we're going to have Dave Taylor, we got Mikey Lawrence, and then Dan McMillan and Luke McMillan. So once again, two of the same team going right <laughs> after each other, back to right? Back. Not I wonder much if of an advantage there. I don't know about this random draw. I think this yeah. is maybe a little strategic, to tell you the truth. A little bit stacked yeah. there on purpose. Because, I mean, you got to think perfect world. Like my brother and I have done it in the past, where it's like if you're spread out enough, it's like Dan could ride with Luke. They could do the qualifier together and then yeah. flop seats or what have you just to get that little bit of insight out of it. But, yeah, when you're bumper to bumper, yeah, there's no chance. Like, exactly, yeah. All right, so we still have a few cars that are going to head out on their practice lap. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but we will be right back. Don't worry, you're not missing any action. And once the time laps start, we will be here to bring all, all that to you guys. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. trails less traveled and reach your destination quicker with King's new Mercedes Sprinter 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with wide range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sprinter kit today. We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? The ultimate adventure tool with all the storage to hold even more adventure tools. The all new adventure ready Bronco Sport. Finishing touches of any off-road vehicle are the things you add to make it your own. That's why we've developed a full collection of over 70 Polaris engineered accessories specifically designed for Pro-R.
Polaris. Think outside. Ensenada, for those who are looking to expand their culinary horizons, a place where the adventures of the sky, valleys, and oceans come together. Ensenada, the capital of Mexican wine. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are here for the Method Race Wheels score qualifier for the King Shocks 37th. San Felipe 250. My name is Austin Fish Farner, and I am joined today by Nick Eisenhower. How you doing, Nick? I'm fantastic. Good? A little early, but we're here. We're ready to watch some qualifying, watch some trucks driving the dirt, and I hope you guys are ready for that too. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Now, this is their practice lap right here that mm -hmm. you guys have just seen. We still have a few trucks left. We have 45 spec trucks entered today which is a new record if all 45 show up we'll have to yeah. wait and see yeah, yeah. if they make it through qualifying alive <laughs> yeah, it will yeah. be all right okay. then it'll be a record officially yeah. so right now we're going with that but uh they're still doing their practice lap so if you guys aren't familiar if you just tuned in today is a qualifier for the race on saturday today everybody gets a chance to qualify in the trophy truck class and the trophy truck spec class and the trophy truck legends, legends. class yep. those are the three classes we're going to be watching today right now the trophy truck spec class is doing their site lap they get to go out on the five mile qualifying course. They get to set their GPS, mark any hazards out there, put numbers on turns, depending on how fast they think they can go. They mm -hmm. get one lap to do all that. So yep. you only get one shot at it. Then they re-rack everybody once everyone has done that. And then they're gonna start their time lapse. So you haven't missed anything yet. Everyone's just doing their practice lap. As soon as the time lapse start, we will let you know. And hopefully we'll have some live timing for you guys today yeah. too. Very so should be Should be pretty exciting. So looking at this uh, entry list here, just go low and down the spec trucks. Who do you think is some of our uh, your top picks today? I know there's 45, and yeah. it's really hard. And you don't want to piss anybody off by, no, not, no, no. by not picking them, right? Because yeah. everybody, if you ask anybody racing, they're all going to tell you they're the fastest, be the fastest dude in the today, dirt. Right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Unfortunately, we have to tell some of them they're not going to be the fastest today. <laughs> it's always hard to tell with spec because in my mind, like anybody could win in a spec truck. You know, yeah. it's a spec class. They got the same motors, same transmission, same everything. It's all dialed in. Um, uh, for those of you home, if you don't understand what a trophy truck spec is, it's an unlimited chassis, uh, unlimited tire size. And the only thing that really, the only rule in the class is you must run a turbo 400 three speed automatic transmission and you have to run a sealed spec, uh, LS three engine, a 525 horsepower engine, uh, 525 horsepower. Sounds like a lot of horsepower, yeah. but by the time you go through a converter and an underdrive and a ring and pinion. Uh, you've lost a good amount, a lot of parasitic loss there. So you're only about like 350 wheel horsepower to the wheels. at the end of the day. And, yeah. and how much of these things weigh on average, you think? I want to just give them a ballpark 6,000 pounds. 6,000 pounds yeah, with the, 325 horsepower to the wheel. That's not not a lot, like you said. No, yeah. but you'd be surprised how quick they get up and going because with the chassis being unlimited, you can drive this thing through any hole, any bump, anything. You drive it like a like a boomer's go-kart or yep. a, like a K1 speed go-kart where you keep your right foot matted and you just kind of trail break around the corners and you just kind of hope for the best. So. Basically the cars have more suspension than the power so they can pretty much Big handle thing. almost mm -hmm. anything. Almost Absolutely. anything. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's, and it's very exciting to see, you know, when we're talking here with 45 trucks and it's crazy to see how this class is just growing and growing and growing. It's almost become somewhat of a catch-all of, you know, guys that don't really want to step into the big trophy truck class and want to spend that budget. You know, you yeah. well, trophy truck spec. It's, it's pretty close to the speed. I mean, I think Jason McNeil, like very, very close to overhauling some of these races in a spec truck. Yeah. What do we like, got? Third overall, right? Third overall. The highest yeah. we finished mm -hmm. so far. So they're not truck. slow by any means. So you're getting the yeah. speed, you're getting the excitement, you're still in a truck, but it's at, you know, a fraction of the cost of an all wheel drive trophy truck. Yeah. And then you got a lot of guys like, you know, run 10 cars and run buggies and all that. And they want to move up to the next class and boom, spec truck. So every, it's kind of a catch all right now. And it's really exciting to see how many people are in this class. And so when you ask me, who do I think is going to qualify first? Yeah. It's almost impossible to tell because you've got a bunch of like fast trophy truck guys that are now in spec trucks. you got a real like hot foot young 10 car guys that are in spec trucks. And, yeah. and there's always just new names here and there. And so, you know, we have like 
our group favorites. You know, there's the herps that'll always be quick, and you know the Colons that are quick. Well, you got to pick somebody. This is if this is pick, no fun if we don't all right, pick people. All right, all right. So think. let's piss some people off. Let's, all right. Let's pick some winners here. Who do you think are going to be our fastest spec truck guys today? And I'll do the same. Okay. You, you you pick one, and then I'll pick one, and then let's see. If we'll I go from there. If I was a betting man, yep. I'm going to put my money on Jason McNeil. Okay. McNeil's are fast. That's who I was going to pick. All McNeil's are fast. I mean, that's, that's what everybody's going to pick. I mean, yeah. third overall, like, like the thousand or whatever have, and like just fast guy, like insanely fast. But if I couldn't pick Jason McNeil, I might put my money on Cade Garcia. Well, now you took my second pick. <laughs> I said we, <laughs> we were going to go think one alike. at a time, Nick. All right. All Sorry. Right. Well, all who right, do we got after that? Well, the, 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 now I got to look at the list more because <laughs> that was going to be two of my top picks here. So oh. going down the list, uh, man, it's, it's so hard to tell now. Um, let me see. I'm, I'm looking here. So we, we got the Hagels are, you know, they got two trucks. Mm -hmm. They got a new truck. I don't think they'll qualify that well. They'll probably do okay in the race. Uh, let me see. Who else do we got here? Justin Davis. Okay, that, okay. that's a good one. That's for, a good For pick. qualifying, yeah. I, I'm going to say Justin Davis will be up there. That, yep. that guy is fast. He'd probably be a top three qualifier today just looking at the list. Mm -hmm. um, who else do we got on there? You can think about the 242. I mean, the Herps. Herps the Herps trucks, yeah. The, one of those will be mm -hmm. up there, if not both. They'll yeah. be in the top five probably. I would say so, yeah. Yeah. But the 242 of Bryce Swain in a brand new Tisco truck. Okay. Yeah, I think in what 18, 19, uh, maybe even 20. Yeah. He was winning a lot of spec truck races. True. He's, he had a new truck built. He's been out for a little bit. This is his first race back. I don't see him being any slower than he was. So there is a potential for him to land in a good spot. Now this being the first race in a new truck, his first race back into actual desert racing, maybe he, you know keeps it a little timid for qualifying for this yeah. but i bet you on race day he'll turn it up pretty good that is true because you, you can't win the race today but you can't lose no. the race today yeah and qualifying <laughs> is so important for this race in my opinion like a 250 mile race is a sprint race 100 percent flat out sprint race you're going as fast yeah. as you can from the start to the finish there is no strategy aside from pass everybody in front of you and the least amount of people in front of you the better yeah so if i was in a spectric right now it would be pulling out all the stops and try and land that thing as far up that starting list as possible exactly this race i don't even think you're going to have time for too much of anything and still have a chance to win no. like if you have one flat tire done. You're, you're probably done with yep. 45 spec trucks mm -hmm. just that minute or two or three that it'll cost you is just is too yeah. much and on this short of a race and so say. that's something to be talked about too it's like you know the days of being able to get out of your truck, make a change or a fix or change a tire or something like that and yeah. still win a desert race are tough. Yes. It's very, very tough. I mean, the unlimited trucks, you have a little bit more because you leave when you're in an unlimited truck or a trophy truck, you have a little bit left in the tank. I'm talking about horsepower wise and speed. Yes. You're kind of right there at that 75, 80 percent range where you're just kind of getting after it. But you have a little bit more you can turn up. In a spec truck, you're 110 percent. And so if you stop, there is no like, oh, you know what? I'm going to turn it up a little bit. No, you've been going flat out from the start of the race and you just killed a minute changing a tire. Yeah, you can't you make be... up time in a spec truck. It it's, doesn't it doesn't really it's happen. It's very tough. It's yeah. very, very tough. I mean, not saying it's impossible. There is a lot of names that could potentially figure that out. You know, the Jurgensons, the McNeils and yep. Grabowskis and names like that. But it's very, very tough to try and make time. Once you get out of that lead pack, you're in for a day. Definitely. And, so. you know, one of the people that you were just talking about, like a guy that could have been able to make up time, Christopher Pulvardi, yep. he was spec truck. He's not in the spec truck class nope. anymore. He's moved up to mm -hmm. the unlimited, uh, to the trophy truck class. Now yeah. he has a new Mason all-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, it's going to be exciting to see him here. But some people in the spec truck class are probably pretty stoked that he's not <laughs> racing in that class anymore because that True. gives them that much more of a chance yeah. to win in that class, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, I bet a bunch of people would be excited if Jason McNeil moved up <laughs> because then they would have that much better of a chance at winning True. in that class as well. True. Right? And, yeah, I know a lot of people probably have that thought and that idea, but I've always been one where, like, give me the challenge. You know, give me the fast guy, and, like, I'm going to try and run yeah. those guys down. But To yeah, be the absolutely. best, you have to beat the best, right? Exactly, and I want the best in yeah. my class, so bring them on. So. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. No, it's um, going to be – this is going to be exciting to watch so we're gonna have like we said 45 spec trucks we got a few that are left there if you were just seeing those cars on course they're doing their practice lap mm -hmm. once they do that we're gonna re-rack everybody and then we will be good to go now talk about you know we said budget earlier yep. so if people aren't familiar with these trucks the the budget for these things has been insane I mean yeah. I remember 10 15 years ago a trophy truck a brand new geyser trophy truck was about 300 to 350 300 thousand dollars yeah done like delivered to you with yep. every turnkey ready to drive body paint truck. and everything yep. everything yep, 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 done yep. yeah now, what, what kind of prices are these things going for now? We're at half a million dollars for a spec truck For now, a spec truck, easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you got to think, if you want all the bells and whistles, turnkey, ready to go, you want the carbon body, because we're spec racing. Oh, yeah. So every little inch weight. helps. Every little piece of weight helps. So all carbon, everything, I, you're well over $500,000 for a spec truck. And that's for 350 wheel horsepower. Remember that. Yeah. And it's a motor you buy from the dealership. It's super <laughs> exciting. But I think, like, the... Uh, uh, 
competitiveness of spec racing is what really drives everybody to it, in my opinion. Definitely. And so you'll spend the money to do that because it's tough. You got to think like the budget on an all-wheel drive truck nowadays used to be like said 300. Yep. You're well, if you want an all-wheel drive turnkey truck, million dollars. Million dollars. Yep. You're at a million dollars now. And it's like, that's something to think too. And that's like something like, you know, we explain to customers from time to time, like, yes, yeah, sure. You might want to come into the sport and go racing and like, yeah, you can buy that truck for a million bucks, yep. but you don't have chase trucks. Yeah. Box trucks, pressure pros, crew guys, prep in a between. prep shop. You get to go to one race <laughs> yeah. on a fresh truck. What happens when you want to go to the next race? You're spending another forty grand to make it ready to go again. M- minimum. Impressive. Yeah. That's just on the engine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, this is this is definitely not a numbers sport. This is definitely a sport of passion. People love this sport, and you're into it because you're into it. You're never you're not into the sport to make any money. You're here to have a good time and yeah. do some good racing. So. And and one thing that's different, they're looking at that start line. You notice they're going to do a rolling start today. Yep. So this is going to be the first time mm-hmm. in a score quality qualifier that we're going to have a rolling start so what that means is you're going to start back a little ways like where these guys are here and Mm -hmm. then you actually get up to speed which is before your time starts which is going to be a big thing right yeah getting out of the hole the all-wheel drives had an advantage before maybe Mm -hmm. not so much anymore they're trying to even it up a little bit but at the same time an all-wheel drive is going to be doing a little bit faster in 100 yards than they are anyways exactly so it'll make a few people happy today i know cameron Steele's super stoked on the rolling (laughs) start so cameron you got your wish you better do good today buddy yeah no i especially in a spec truck like i'm going to keep coming back to that because that's where we're at right now but like the rolling start for the spec truck is huge because like we're talking the low horsepower and all that trying to dig out of the hole it feels like an eternity before you get up to speed especially if you're the like 10th truck or back those ruts are big and silty and sandy and you're trying to turn a 40 inch tire and man it's just it's rough so the rolling start big advantage gives you some time to get up to speed at least in a second gear so yeah All right, we're being told there's only a couple cars left. We're going to go to one more commercial break, and then when we come back, right around 8.30-ish, we're still looking pretty good at probably uh, starting some timed runs. So we're going to be, uh, we'll be right back. We're going to one commercial break, get everyone done with their sight lap, and then we're going to start doing some time laps for you guys. So stay tuned to the Method Race Wheels San Felipe 250 qualifier. We'll be right back in a couple minutes. further, explore the trails less traveled, and reach your destination quicker with King's new Toyota Sequoia 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with optional wide-range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sequoia kit today. We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? the ultimate adventure tool with all the storage to hold even more adventure tools. The all new adventure ready Bronco Sport.
back everybody we are here once again for the method race wheels score qualifying for the king shocks 37 san felipe 250 i am austin fish farner joined today by nick eisenhower bringing you guys this live coverage you can see everybody is getting re-racked right here at the start line these are our trophy truck spec trucks that just finished their site lap they got to go out on our five mile qualifier course take a look uh, for one lap mark the gps then they get back in line and we're getting ready to go uh with some time runs soon, Nick. Yep, very exciting. Super exciting. These guys have got to be super pumped. This is the start of a fresh season, fresh year, fresh everything. So this is definitely the time to shine. Put your best foot forward and hope for the best. Yeah, you don't, you don't <laughs> want to come out looking like a donkey right no, out, of the, right no, out of the no. gate here today, right? That's it. That's <laughs> it. This can set the tone for your whole season right here. So there's a lot of stress on this, but, hey, it is what it is, and that's what racing's all about is having fun and being stressed out. Yeah, yeah, that makes it fun. And you can see there is a ton of trucks here. This is potentially the largest spec truck 6100 class that we have ever seen at yep. any race in history. There are 45 of them registered today. We'll have to see how many take the green flag on Saturday to make an official record. But the previous high was at this race last year. We had 43 take the green flag on Saturday. So what, what an epic way to start the season. And one of the biggest classes and one of the most popular classes, like mm -hmm. we were just talking about in off-road racing today, is the spec trophy truck. Yeah, very, very exciting stuff. And like, if you're just tuning in, uh, Austin and I have been talking. Uh, these guys went out and did their site lap. They're re-racking, getting ready to take off for their timed runs. Um, and this is, you know, where you let it all hang out. You've got five miles to go as fast as you can. And that, you know, sets your starting position for Saturday's race. And you've got yep. 250 miles to put on a show that day. Exactly. So. And something new that SCORE did this year is they brought qualifying to every race this year. Yep. So in the past, they always had it at San Felipe. Well, not always. It used to be a draw, actually. It mm -hmm. just used to be a random draw out of a hat. And wherever your, uh, your name was pulled, that was your starting order. A lot of people didn't like that. Some people did, but I think qualifying is the way to go because it gives you a chance to earn that starting yeah, spot. If you're going to so. start first off the line, really, you should earn it. Yeah. So th this, this is a fun way to do it. And San Felipe, you're going to have to qualify. And then going into the Baja 500, you're going to qualify once again. Mm -hmm. Now, th the way they did it is that if you race the previous race, you're allowed to qualify. In order to qualify at the Baja 500, you would have had to race this race. So Got you can't it. just show up to the Baja 500 and qualify. If you didn't race this race and you show up to the Baja 500, you will start behind everybody that did race this race that qualifies at the Got 500. It. So that way, you know, if you only want to do the Baja 1000 at the end of the year, you can't just show up and qualify. You have to do the Baja 400 in order yep. to get a, a starting spot. You Makes have sense. to start the Baja 400 <laughs> yeah. to yeah. get a starting spot in qualifying for the Baja 1000. You got to have somebody put your number on their truck and start <laughs> yeah. the Baja 400 that, exactly. to qualify for the Baja 1000. Yeah, um, so here we are. We're getting ready. It should be any minute now. You can see the, the water truck just went, which the water truck always changes it a little bit too, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, very I wouldn't much want so. to be the first car off the line no. right here after that water truck just went. That, that first couple turns could be pretty slippery. Exactly, yeah. You never want to be the first guy behind a water truck. It's yeah. Always okay to be the second and third guy. Let somebody kind of tear it up a little bit for you, build a little bit of a two track. And that's something to talk about here too is the first trucks off the line right now going around this course. Yeah, we've had 45 trucks go through on their site lap, which I do not believe there was a speed limit. We saw some clips of some guys getting after Some guys were going pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So there will be some you know, berms built up and some ruts built up. But overall, being the first guy out on this track, it's going to be a little tough. You know, there's not going to be the, like, uh, you know, like the brake warnings and the dirt discoloration and the lines kind of decided for you. You kind of got to blaze your own trail. And I don't think there's anybody better than Thor Herps to be that first guy. They've got plenty of time behind the wheel of these trucks. They've got tons and tons of time in Mexico, and they're great qualifiers. So I think for them, I'm sure their nerves are just, you know, sustained a little bit. But, you know, if it was me being first guy on that track, yeah. down in Mexico, new to Mexico, all that, I'd be very, very nervous with that. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. And here we go. You can see they're pulling them up to the start line right now. So it is 830. I would say within about a minute maybe or so. We haven't heard officially mm -hmm. yet, but it looks like we're getting ready to go. So hopefully we have some in-car camera for you guys today. Hopefully we got some live timing for you guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, this should be exciting. This is going to go on most of the day. Remember, we're going to do the trophy truck specs first, and then we're going to re-rack everybody after that. The trophy trucks are going to go out. We've got the trophy truck legends. So yep. uh, mm -hmm. it's going it's to be a long day today. Full day of trucks in the dirt. Nothing better. So Nothing better. Yeah, hopefully you're at work with your headphones on or your boss is cool enough to let you have this on on the TV there at work or you're at home kicking back, working from home, whatever you got to do. But yeah, definitely worth you know paying attention to all this and watching that. And like we said, we've got a good solid amount of camera angles for this one and we'll have some live timing and 
You can watch Fish and I talk about trucks. <laughs> Nothing better. Yeah, and you know, everyone has Starlink now, too. So I guarantee you, everybody's watching this down there uh -huh. right now. A oh, lot of yeah. these guys in their trucks have Starlink, <laughs> so they're probably sitting in the start line right now yep. watching this. I mean, I would be, because mm -hmm. you want to see what the course looks like yep. and what these guys are doing on the course. Yep. So it's an advantage not to be first right now and to be a few cars back. Hey, sit yeah. there in your car on your phone with your Starlink and watch this and yep. see what they do on some corners and Absolutely. mentally take notes. And that's something to talk about, too, is just how important that Starlink, or how big of a tool Starlink Starlink has become in off-road racing, whether it's, you know, just safety and communication and whatnot, or tracking, or like situations like this, being able to just have the internet and be able to pay attention to watching us on the TV screen yeah. and watch the qualifier to maybe pick up some little tips and tricks, which could be make or break for your qualifying run. Exactly. And you're going to know what times the other guys are running today, too. Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting here, you're going to know as soon as uh, Thor Herbst goes here, hopefully we're going to know right away what his time was. So if mm -hmm. you're the second or third car back sitting there, you're going to know what kind of time you got yeah. to beat. Yeah. I mean, it's qualifying, so you're just going to floor it no matter what. Right. You think anybody's <laughs> going to go slow? Yeah. yeah. Are they, anybody going to sandbag yeah. today? Like, no. would you not want to be first? Not for San Felipe. I mean, yeah. in my opinion, you know, like we were talking earlier, it's a sprint race. You know, it's 250 miles. Yeah. That's a, what, is like a five-hour race maybe? Call it that? I, yeah, for spec trucks, maybe. I yeah. mean, I think our winner, I've heard people say that we're going to be at like 65 mile an hour average. They're guessing. Wow. So, wow. I mean, we were going to be at like four hours or so mm -hmm. maybe for, yeah. the, for the overall winner mm -hmm. of this race on Saturday. Yeah. Probably another record is going to be set with the fastest San Felipe as far as True. the average time. Because yeah. the, 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 um, the course is longer this year. So it's 285 miles, I believe. Mm -hmm. so in prior years, it was 250 some years. Sure. So a 250 sure. could be faster overall mm -hmm. time. But if you look yeah. at the average time, this could be the fastest San Felipe 250 ever. And something to think about, too, is just, like, obviously uh, advancements of the machines that these guys are racing. And there's so many, like, you know, years past, there's two or three all-wheel drive trucks that could really do something. Yes. Right now, I was trying to get a count of this, which I'll get to you guys later, but there are a lot of all-wheel drive Mason trucks in the starting grid. Yes, there is. A lot of them. And so, yeah, the potential for this to be the fastest San Felipe, this is the time to do it with these machines. Like, it's just yep. impressive. Yeah, definitely so. cool. And one of the things I, I like personally that SCORE did is they left the trophy truck class unlimited. They did not split it up. Sure. So if you're in an all-wheel drive or a two-wheel drive, you're in the mm -hmm. same class. I, I personally think that's <laughs> the way to go. I like that. A lot of people know that I so like people that. People are going to get fired <laughs> right? up. Better Some be people careful. are already mad. They're yelling at me like, oh, Text two-wheel drive, right two <laughs> drive doesn't have a chance anymore, blah, blah, blah. You still have to beat the desert. If you sure. want to race a two-wheel drive and you don't want to race the unlimited class, mm -hmm. go in this class right here. Go, go get a spec truck. Yeah. Go do what these guys are doing and go race this class. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that is a two-wheel drive trophy truck right they there. They are. They're, yeah, they're, they're underpowered two-wheel drive trophy trucks. Yeah, the chassis is literally the same. Yes. It's exactly. Like the, that Herbs chassis is the same as the 19. It's, it's exactly the same. The only thing you're going to change when it comes to a spec truck to an all-wheel, like an unlimited trophy truck two-wheel drive would be like potentially brake packages. You might put a little yes. bit more brake into a trophy truck. Obviously, the engine and transmission package is unlimited, so yes. you might end up with like a six-speed sequential or something fun like that in there. Yep. But yeah, other than that, like the bones of these trucks are identical. Same tires, same, same tire size, yep, Same all tires, that same wheels. Uh, just It's just the accessories and the little widgets and such that you put into these cars that kind of yeah. set them aside and allow them to handle the horsepower of, you know, some big, wild, thousand horsepower big block or some crazy Joe Gibbs motor. Yeah, so. that's going to be uh, – that's true. Now, you can see here's our first car. This is Thor Herps. I'm being told 835 is when he's going to start. It's 834 on my computer right now. So within a minute, I believe this car is going to be going off the line. And you can see on the roof there, they have their Starlink. It, the, they usually have live in-car here, so we might be able to tap into this live in-car at some point for the Herps here and watch Thor Herps going around. So on the entry list, it's Thor Herps, and we have Jeremy Munyon in there as his co-driver. And their, uh, their builder is listed as 1-9 Industries. So a few people have asked me, what is 1-9 mm -hmm. Industries? Because before on the list, it was always HSF, which was Herb, uh, Herb Smith Fab, yep. which was who built these trucks. So they've started a new company now. They've renamed it 1-9 Industries. And the 1-9 is a tribute to the 19 that is a very long time Herb's family number that they have ran in the yep. trophy truck class. So they called it 1-9 Industries. The 1 is a number, and then it's <laughs> 9 spelled out. Yeah. So it looks kind of cool. So it's 1-9 Industries is what that is. If you guys are looking at the list and wondering what it is yep. there it is i was wondering i asked fish you did so now i'm like, like, right, you I'm like what does this mean i saw <laughs> it on some entry lists earlier this year and now i'm like ah makes sense Get i i, I asked ryan arciero yesterday so oh, i cheated God. and Got I, the I did a little scoop. bit of homework actually which i normally do yeah, that's what fish <laughs> is very good at is doing his homework and getting the inside scoop if you don't know just ask right <laughs> yeah that's yeah. it can't hurt <laughs> so, so very this, should be starting it within a minute here, underneath a minute, maybe any second. Mm -hmm. we're, we're with you guys here. We're just waiting and watching. Yeah. I don't have audio down there to the start line, but I was told 835. My clock just ticked over a minute ago. So should be seeing Thor Herps go off the line any time now. 
I wonder if they're giving them a starting position they have to start at. Or they'll probably start under the method arch and then the timing loop's probably further forward is what I would assume. Yeah, we should be able to see the timing loop, I would think, unless it's buried in the ground. Is that the wires going across right there, actually? Potentially. It may be them. We'll, we'll try to pick that up for you guys on the camera here in one of these views so we can see where the time actually starts and stops. Yeah, so say, for instance, if that method banner was the starting line, I would be starting as far back as I could to try and get a jump on that start Correct. line. Correct, because yeah. if you hit that start line doing 10 miles an hour, Versus, you're already faster than the guy mm -hmm. that was sitting there like this doing yeah. zero, right? Uh-huh. And, and so. seconds are all we're talking about today. Oh, like, yeah. This is going to be less than seconds between mm -hmm. these guys. This is going to be less than one second yeah, in with, a lot of these spots. With 45 trucks, like the timing is going to be insane. Like there's going to be, there is the potential for numbers to be stacked on top of each other. So this is definitely be a really, really cool qualifier in my opinion. I'm, I'm really excited to, you know, analyze these results at the end of all this and kind of really see where everybody's stacked up and where everything laid out. And, a lot of it's going to depend on how the track changes. You know, there might be some correlation to like the first couple of trucks off the line versus the last couple of trucks off the line, depending on how the, the track deteriorates. Yeah. But uh, other than that, you know, like, man, it's just going to be a well, pretty solid run. Let's talk about that for a second. So yeah. sometimes in qualifying, it's an advantage to be first, sure. like Thor is right here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a disadvantage to be first. So the advantage is if you're doing a, a track that is kind of it gets chewed up easier mm -hmm. or it's been raced on a lot and the line's already there, the berms are already built yeah. up. You yeah. kind of want to be first, right? Yeah. You don't want to be late. Yeah, you want that fresh dirt. You want that good traction. You want all that stuff because if it's if it's lines that are already burned in, you have something to lean on. And that's something that happens. It's hard to kind of understand it if you come from a road racing background or just driving your car on the street. Yeah. But in off-road, the berms and the edges and the things that you lean on when it comes to cornering are just like end all be all very important especially in a two-wheel drive car you don't have that front end pulling you around yep so you want to set that car in you lay into that berm and you rip around now if you don't have that berm you look like a kid in your high school dirt parking lot doing a big old donut trying to slide the thing all over the place just yep. losing mile per hour and just not making track time so you definitely want a berm to lean on and so something like this like with us being unaware of what the course looks like if there's nothing built up yet this is going to be tough for thor to run through now, if this is something that these guys have kind of burned in a good amount, then this is definitely going to be the game. And me and you haven't seen this course yet no. either. This is the first <laughs> time we're watching with you guys. So yeah. we'll know as soon as we see the first car go around if this is an advantage or a disadvantage mm -hmm. right here, yeah. right? We're all on the same page berms, here. Yeah. If we see berms already built up, then this is probably an advantage going yes. this early because mm -hmm. a lot of the smooth stuff is going to stay smooth and later exactly. in the day it's going to get chewed mm -hmm. up. Yeah, a lot, of, yeah, a lot of the holes are, like won't be developing. The braking bumps won't be there. The accelerating bumps won't be there. And that's something that happens a lot is coming into a lot of these corners when you're on the brakes the truck is basically building little mounds of dirt as it hops over and so the more of those going into each corner it's just a it's uncomfortable in the car and b it just slows the vehicle down and it's hard to get your you know your exit speed out of it when you've got the braking bumps leading in and then the accelerating bumps coming out of the turn yeah so it's definitely something like it's a game to play you know you, when it comes to something like this a draw for qualifying position just it is what it is i don't really it's hard to kind of figure out the best move here Okay, I've been told that this is where you start at, and then the timing starts when you get to the method flags. Oh, got so it. So, Boyd just texted the timing starts just before the method flags. So, so, right there, you can see this angle is kind of hard to tell because it looks like the flags Next are next to each other, start, yeah. right? But from the up, the, from the top angle, you can oh, tell the flags. You can are see the orange ribbons. I'm assuming the orange ribbons must be the timing loop. Probably, there. and then yeah. you see the cord kind of going across yep. and from yep. the method. I think that's mm -hmm. the, the actual it. loop. So, yeah, like. that's a great way to start back there. I mean, you're going to at least get the truck up into pace. You could potentially grab yourself into second gear and get the thing up and moving. Yeah. Get, get the tires stopped from spinning, and then you're on your way. And our eight our eight thirty five start is in Baja time. Just remember. So we are now eight thirty nine. We are getting closer <laughs> though. But that's a Baja time for the start. So I'm being told they're working on something on the course real quick, and then we're going to be starting. So there's a small delay, and uh, th th that's probably a delay too. You don't, <laughs> don't want to you don't want to uh, yeah. arch coming down in your face when you're about to start. <laughs> so they got to put go. some hot air back in that thing. There and, it is. Uh, and get it back up. Got to fire those fans back up. What's going on? <laughs> Who forgot to put gas in the generator for the fans, right? Somebody is fired. <laughs> so just a small delay on the course, and then any minute now, hopefully we are going with some action for you guys. Mm -hmm. You guys are tuned in. It is uh, what's, it's 8:40 on the uh, West Coast. This is San Felipe time. So uh, I think we're on the same time as San Felipe, right? We normally are now because of the. Uh, it should be 8:40 there too. I don't know much. I can put cars <laughs> together and I can talk. That's what I'm good at here. I don't know what time it is over there. Oh, what's he saying here? It looks <laughs> like he's, he's telling him to rev it up. I thought he was waving. Maybe he's telling him to start it up. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so you can see where the flags are. What yep, is that, I about see. 100 yards maybe? Yeah, that's a good feet? enough. Yeah, yeah. And I think yeah that's at a, the most, yeah. That's a fair start. Now, that 
that starting grid's gonna get chewed up a little bit right there, like at the Method Race Wheels banner right there. Yep. It's gonna get a little chewed up, but I think you'll be able to clear it out by the end of the day. And get when you get to the like the orange markings there and the flags, yep. you'll be up to a, a respectful pace. And and so like you were saying earlier, if if they're not making you pull all the way up where he is oh, right there, as I would back stay as I back, could. right? Yeah. Like, yeah, unless they're gonna make you pull all the way up, uh -huh. stay back, because that's how much more speed you will yep. get by the time yeah. you get up there. You can hit that <laughs> if you can hit that timing loop at fifty five miles an hour, shoot dang, you're gonna yeah. do something cool. Go. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what exactly. you want to do. <laughs> but, yeah. All right, should be any second, we're being told. Looks like he's holding something up there. There, there we go. go. All right, so our first car is off the line. It is the 219 of Ford Hertz. It is on the board. Real time. Yeah, that's it. This is our first look at the course. So let's check it out. We got, let's, we got a hard right right off the start. It's going to get should be going left. This map was posted. Check the uh, score and after this beginning date. Uh, yep. You can definitely see the post map in the back. I saw that Jason Hyred is out there at a couple big drops. So there is going to be some action here because there is two big drops on this course that it looks like some people are going to be able to send it off if they want. So yes. we're going to see who checks up and who goes for it. Score international off-road racing. There's always something exciting to see. It's Baja. Yeah, that's it. And we can see where the home point is for the drone. So if we need to tell the drone where to go back to the home, we, got it. we know where it is. <laughs> so we're definitely dialed there. So what time do we have the first car going? Right at 841? This is 14. Yeah, it was probably right. I wasn't looking. Probably 8:40. We're terrible at this. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. 8:42. I'm just gonna go with that because that's what time it's right now. So, I believe it's gonna be probably two and a half, two minutes apart, two to two and a half. We'll see, right? We'll see where the next car goes. Safe. Yeah, yeah. I would cut like half of a qualifying lap is what I would cut. Yeah, would usually cars. they do like two cars on the course at a time, right? That way, in case someone has an, uh, a problem, you're not totally screwed if you're right behind them, and they don't really want anybody catching each other today because no. that's not good for anybody. Absolutely not. Now, so. one thing to look at here, do we have any wind? Let's see what that dust is doing. No. It doesn't look like there's that much. That dust huh? is sitting. So that is definitely not ideal. No, absolutely not. They're yeah. going every three minutes, you're just every told. Every three minutes, Perfect. okay. Perfect. So every three minutes. Yeah, and like we were talking, you know, we're kind of assuming like a six minute qualifier. So yeah, that'd be about, about half. halfway, yeah. right? Yeah, that's what, that's what I would do is let them go halfway and then send yep. another one. Yep. Then yep. nobody should catch anybody unless someone has a problem, obviously. Exactly. So probably right about two minutes from now, you're going to see the next car go off the line. This is EJ Herps, another uh, 1.9 Industries truck. The 263 is going to be uh, EJ Herps with Ryan Millen and Josh Montoya is listed on our entry list here. So Ryan Millen, he drives these half the time. I don't know if, I forgot to ask him, if yeah. Ryan is driving today for qualifying or not. Ooh, he does yeah. sometimes, yeah. but EJ has been getting more seat time. They mm -hmm. might be doing EJ in there. If someone knows, someone can text me, probably within yep. a second here I'll know yep. if this is EJ or Ryan driving today. And the way that works is whoever qualifies today has to start the race also. So you can't just put in a super fast qualifying driver today and then put in a different driver to start tomorrow. Yeah. You do have to have the same mm -hmm. person in there, which is how it should be. Absolutely, I totally, totally agree. Yeah, Ryan Millen, I think, is Herp's little secret weapon. <laughs> yeah. Especially when it comes in the spec truck realm, like very like unspoken about how fast that dude is in a race truck. So very impressive, and I always love seeing when his name's on an entry list, because you know, whichever truck he's associated with is gonna do well. Yeah. There's the 219 with Thor Herbst just running through, and like we're talking, you can kind of see like a lot of these turns are looking pretty flat. There is a trail built up, there is a little bit of two track, but not much to lean on there. All oh, right. No, you might be all right there, yeah. And when I just got confirmation, Sandy, it wouldn't take very long. EJ is starting in the truck and he is driving. Today. Cool. So EJ Herbst is qualifying. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Perfect. And that, that was kind of the whole point of having Ryan Millen in there with him. He was kind of teaching him the ropes. Yeah. He would ride and then he would switch and he would uh, drive for a little bit. And EJ would ride with him to learn. And I thought that's a really smart way to do it. That's honestly the best way to do it. It's so hard. You can't really put pen to paper on how to drive one of these trucks and really understand it. It's such a feel thing. And it's, it, I mean, you could sit in a classroom and try and explain this and explain that. But sitting in the passenger seat or sitting in the driver's seat with somebody telling you what to do and what not to do is the only way to make this, like to get fast in this sport. Um, you know, seat time is seat time, whether it's right seat, left seat, and it's all experience. And every little piece of experience makes you faster on the racetrack. Definitely. And look, at, there's some there's some sharp turns on this course. And I didn't see a berm on that turn new, either, right? It's looking so. very dry as well, which is going to be a bit of a disadvantage for the guys coming up later on because it's going to just get dug out and dug out, especially in the spec trucks. And yeah. something my brother and I call, we call it chainsawing, chainsawing. where you're just floored, just yeah, like digging through and the max RPM, max wheel speed, but you're really not going nowhere. Yeah. So there's the potential for a lot of that coming through a lot of these corners. So. 
But then I know you run through sections like here where you're down in this wash and you can kind of pick up a little bit of speed. But I think Score International did a really good job setting this qualifier up to kind of equalize everybody and, you know, keep everybody on their toes with lots of turns and lots of ups and yeah. downs and all that. It's not big long straightaway qualifier this this actually looks like a really fun course mm -hmm. so far it's not yeah like you said it's not super soft the whole time like look we got a lot of hard pack this is hard pack it's a little tight and technical it looks like racetrack it's and got bumps yeah it really does yeah you're not qualifying on a short course <laughs> and, and <laughs> it it's not race. very burned in yet either like yeah. the, i mean that's a fresh line right there that line yeah. has not been ran very much you can see how close the trees are and everything right uh -huh. to the side that line's going to get a little oh up on two wheels there up on the bike for a second yeah, in that corner spots are going to get tough so if that's 219 i would assume so he just made a hard left there. I wonder if that's that T12 right there making that U-turn around. Because I would assume he's... Here he is going to make another left right here. I think you're probably about right. He's about halfway through right yep. now. T12 to T13. So, yeah, so it's the 13th turn there. If I was a betting man, I would assume that's him. This should be like a big, long, sweeping left. And then it's going to tighten up left in the T14. Yeah, I think you're Yeah, I think we're correct. right there. So a road crossing one. So and there is no there. wind. Look at that no. dust. It is just sitting there. So definitely the three-minute spacing between trucks is going to come into play. I, I think it's probably long enough. I don't think you'll be in the, right. there, but it's really hard to tell. Yeah. And you can see that is the 263 right there. So that is EJ Herbst, the second truck to head out on course. Mm -hmm. So we have our second truck just started right now. Three-minute start splits between them today. So EJ Herps is driving with uh, Ryan Millen, I would assume, is riding with him then. And we've got a third truck there off the line, which would be Santiago Creel in the 260. Well, that seemed kind of quick for him to be going, right. huh? Yeah, that, I mean, it's, it's been a minute. three minutes? Yeah, yeah, because uh, uh, EJ had taken off a little bit a ago. Two, yeah, I guess so. I think next on the line should be the 207 of Mason Cullen. Oh, you can see the course actually gets pretty close together right there, too, from the start to yeah. coming back in. So a little bit of that dust may come into play if it mm -hmm. gets scooted over to the other side of the course. Yeah, so this should be the 219 coming towards his finish. Oh, whoa, blew that corner a little bit. Yeah, oh, yeah. taking out a king flag there. Don't let off the gas. <laughs> well, then... that's the time finish right there. So yep. when you see that arch right there, but right before the king, that is going to be your time finish. So I just, you know, looking six at minutes. that. Roughly six minutes. It, yeah, there's what we're looking at. There we go. Okay, six minutes. It's a good time yeah, let's see if we get uh, we get some times for you guys. Change that to the spec there. Let's see. No times for you guys yet, but Nothing. hopefully they get they get populated here. Yeah. The 207 of Mason Colon uh, did very very well in Class 10. It holds his own definitely in spec truck. Uh, always a contender. You know when we were talking about who we thought was going to win this race and qualify first and all that. Yep. That's definitely the name I keep looking at because he's definitely got the hot foot for this and knows how to keep a car alive and. Definitely a great wheelman. Yeah. Yeah, John Hoffman over at Hoffman Motorsports does all the prep on that truck. Mm -hmm. John's been around a long time, one of the, mm -hmm. the best guys in the industry to have uh, prepping your car. Yep. So uh, definitely good to see Mason out here again. He usually races with his dad, Matt Cullen. Usually they race together. Mm -hmm. So they'll be going off the line in a minute. All right, so we have, let's see. It's not correct yet. We've got some start times. We'll have to try to find some finish times in a minute. Santiago Creel there, digging through those corners. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a tough qualifier. It's from what we've seen, what I've seen so far of the course, just in these clips that we've all seen together. Yep. Uh, it definitely looking all-wheel drive specific it, it, all the it sand does, coming right? in and out of these corners and just right now like just digging through here you gotta think that's just eating speed until you get to about here then you're making a little bit of traction and then yeah. it just keeps eating the truck up so we were talking earlier in the day about whether we felt it was an advantage to go first or later on in the pack when it comes to spec trucks going first off the line in my opinion is a very good move right now with how like beat up this track's already getting with only four trucks going through. And we do have some of our fast picks going pretty early today too. Like mm -hmm. obviously we had the Herbst trucks everybody saw and then Colin and then Cade Garcia yep. is going going to be going in next after mm -hmm. Colin. Yep. So that's another fast one. So and mm -hmm. Bryce Swain, he's yep. fast. So we've got a lot of fast guys going up at the front. We'll see if any of the fast guys going towards the rear can uh, do much. Uh, Justin Davis is towards the rear a little bit more. Yep. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see what time he can throw down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And somebody to think about, too, is Brent Fox. Talk about a man who has more miles in off-road racing than anybody. I talked to him yeah. the other weekend at a race, and he said he did 12 off-road races last year. That's, that's 12 of them. That's a lot of races. That's impressive. Yeah, he races just about everything. You can yeah. see Santiago Creel right there on screen. 
Oh, uh, th- oh. Yeah, okay. EJ, they're doing a little bit kind of uh, the same deal. <laughs> sideways there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's right at the finish there, huh? That's uh-huh. a tough finish coming into that corner. It's just because right it S's there. So you come off that little straight and you've got a good amount of speed and then it's going to yeah. hook you hard left, hook you hard right, and then it wants you to sweep into that finish. And that's just going to be a tough thing to do when you're trying to make every inch of speed. And the racer in me just wants to make that very, very straight. Yes. So I'm trying to dig through that. But if you've got berms built up or two track, you're going to get that side-to-side teeter action going through, which hopefully nobody takes out the timing loop, which we've seen before. I was before. just going to say, I, I <laughs> yeah. almost wonder if someone's going to hit the fence there. Yeah. You know, I would put money on it almost, and someone's going to take yeah. a piece of the fence out at the end there. Wouldn't be the first time, and it won't be the last, that's no. for sure. So this is Santiago Creel, I believe, right mm-hmm. here, it looked like. Just Craft putting that dust up, man. A little W would definitely seconds. help the situation out, I think. Yeah, that is a lot of dust and no no wind. I just looked at a weather report that we got. This is three miles an hour, but well, yeah, I don't even... Look at these flags. looks like zero right now. Just barely moving. Yeah, it makes for a long day for the media guys out there hanging out, eating dust. Yeah, that's dust. a lot of dust. Mm-hmm. Yep. All the photogs and videographers. So, so next should be Cade Garcia if he didn't start yet in the 204. And then Matt Winslow is going to be following him in the 259. Landing. That looks like Cade right there. I mm-hmm. see a little bit of gray and purple on the front there. Mm-hmm. So that's most likely Cade Garcia going next. Yep. He's got Nick Almada in there, longtime yep. co-driver of his. Yeah, and then like we talked earlier too, we're kind of like how spec trucks become somewhat of the catch-all of off-road racers, you know guys that don't really want to run with the trophy truck guys or people that are moving up in class and Cade's a perfect example of that hot foot in the 10 car did very very well in the class 10 car and now in a spec truck yes so and he's just as quick in the spec truck as he was in the 10 car so he's definitely somebody to keep an eye on and uh you know results definitely do very well Still trying to work on getting some times for you guys here for these first cars that finished. Fly with caution. And Kay Garcia should be going off the line any second. That's Mason Collin making his way around to the top. That one, truck's always easy to spot when you see yellow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that? some of these turns sneak up on you. I think it seems like everybody's kind of doing the same deal. I was going to say, that's a flat turn right there, right? Uh-huh. You're, you're going straight into a flat line. That's yeah. going to be, uh, be blown by a few people later for sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is definitely an all-wheel drive course. Uh, mm-hmm. Huge advantage. For, yeah, for later like. on the day. Yeah, you see Cade there taking out the, the snow fencing, making around yeah. that corner. <laughs> That's the thing. When, you got, when it comes to qualifying, it comes to off-road racing in general. Like, they give you a race line, and they give you, you know, VCPs oh, or points you got to get through. Was, I thought that was a turn right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's up to your discretion, man. you got to make that track as straight as fast as you can, so... You'll definitely see a lot of creativity, especially in qualifying. You, know, you want to risk it. You're not sure you don't want to catch a flat in five miles. It would definitely end end your situation. But yes. you're definitely going to take a lot more risks in this qualifying run here. So you're gonna, we'll definitely get a good amount of media out of this for sure. Oh, yeah. And there, there's no VCPs really today. No, so no, no. Not, yeah. like, you're supposed to stay on the course, but it's kind of up to uh-huh. score on what they want to enforce where on the course. So yeah, but I'm sure, gonna, yeah. I'm sure there's markers to like, get between and there's markings yeah. you don't want to touch. So. Yeah, in the past at some qualifiers, there was a, you know, if there was cones and you hit a cone, you'd get a penalty. Yeah. But today, I don't think that's the case. I don't see any cones out there. Yeah. I haven't been told about any cones or anything. Or if a rock hits a cone, you get a penalty. True, right? <laughs> the the conversation of the over, century, yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't hit it. It was my roost. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Prove it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instant replays. Yeah. Well, that's what's nice about having GoPros and everything all over these cars nowadays. Mm-hmm. If someone says something, you're like, well... Here we go. Check yeah. out the footage. Yep, you know, absolutely. the footage doesn't lie. The, yes. the camera is going to show you what happened. Uh-huh. The, the driver and the co-driver are going to tell you one story, but then the video is going to tell you another story, which is awesome for us to see today with all this live coverage here that, you know, we get to watch this live. It's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Absolutely. Now we just need to get some times coming in, and then we'll be dialed. We've got start times. We've got... It's Cade Garcia there. Yeah, I mean, you're, like sections like this, the course is when it, the deeper it gets burned in, the deeper the two track is, you're gonna have more to lean on, which is gonna be very helpful. But then you run into stuff like that, where that's that that upper layer of more like compacted sand is kind of breaking away, and you get deeper into the, the looser sand of sorts going through these washes, and you're just losing forward bite like all the way around. 
So that's a pretty big bump there. That's yeah. Gonna get, uh, that's going to get torn up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of these pointers are going to get faster later, right? Yes, like absolutely. some of these ones that we don't see a berm on right now, mm -hmm. there's going to be a berm built up. So going a little bit later might not be too big of a disadvantage <laughs> to some of them. Yeah, but something to think about too going into that though is that these guys don't know that that berm got built up. True. If you really think about it, like they saw this lap. So say you're mid pack or what have you, you've got 20 guys that just went around that course behind you and you got yeah. 20 guys that just went ahead of you so you have 40 people burned through that track since the last time you saw it yep and it's going to be completely different yeah like that turn right there is going to get built up a lot and that's when you don't want to bobble too if you land yourself in that no, canyon the ditch? <laughs> so, someone's going in that ditch today for sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right so next car is off the line here is that matt winslow yep matt winslow in the 259 looks like an older mason chassis sponsored by high caliber almonds I do love almonds. Ooh, almonds. Everybody likes almonds. Yeah, how do we get Those a plug? Get us some almonds. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Well, yeah, we got to fund this off-road racing program right? here. We're buying almonds. Yeah. I wonder if they should be in a trophy truck with the price of almonds nowadays. <laughs> All right. All right. So they're headed out on course. Once again, there's a three-minute gap today between these starters for this class. There's about two out on course at a time because they're taking just about between six and seven minutes, it looks like, so far. Unofficially, we haven't got any official times yet. Yeah, and the likeliness of, uh, you know, you starting behind somebody and catching the driver ahead of you is very unlikely unless the driver ahead of you has some form of an issue. Yes. So if you have some sort of drivetrain problem, has to pull over, has to stop, puts the yeah. thing on its door, you're not going to catch that guy. On, on this, course, on this no, course, nobody's course. catching anybody. No. Yeah, like you said. So. The dust does seem to be settling a bit. If you look there, like the wind obviously isn't picking up, but it doesn't seem to be hanging as bad as we've seen in the past. Like this yeah. isn't in the little valley of sorts where it kind of pools up and fills up the dust and then nobody can see anything. Well, look, look at the method flag there on the bottom right. It's starting to move a little bit now. Yeah. So we are seeing a little bit of movement, which is going to definitely help this out throughout the day today. Hopefully that picks up even mm -hmm. more. Yeah, and it's only 9 o'clock. You know, I don't know meteorologist or nothing, but usually the wind doesn't pick up till a little bit later in the morning anyway. So hopefully by the time the unlimited trucks start running through here, we get a little bit of a breeze and relieve the uh, photogs out there of all the dust they're all eating. So hopefully it gets a good run here. Uh, next truck we got here is the 249 at Chase Swanson. Uh, that's a Jake Velasco Prep Tisco truck, uh, 4950 out of Hawaii. Very beautiful trucks. Everything Jake ever puts together always turns out real nice and pretty. He puts the good finishing touches on everything, makes sure everything's coated right, painted right. Pretty race car if you get the opportunity to look at them. Matt Winslow doing a little gardening out there, knocking some bushes down for everybody, making the line a little bit wider for the next group of guys to go through. And yeah, you can see here, those turns are getting built up a little bit. Yep, and that's the last thing you want to do in the sand there is to hang it out the outside. But hey, you got to do what you got to do. Keep the thing moving forward. Is it a little bit of a tree hanging off the door there on the side? A little, a little, little shrubbage. A little shrubbage. This course is going to get a little wider by the end of the day. <laughs> Just a touch. There goes Kate Garcia. Do what you got to do, man. Yeah, I think, if, I bet you, you go back and you look at this guy's data, that's a wide open throttle the entire time, just trying to make up speed everywhere you can. Yeah, this, this is definitely going to be a fast, fast mm -hmm. run, like we predicted earlier. It'll be one of the fastest of the day. Yeah, I agree. All right, so next we're going to have, yeah, what did we say, Chase, Chase Swanson's Swanson. going to yep. be next, the 249, mm -hmm. and then Vincent Munoz after him. Hey. And the 94 old 1450 racer. That's it. And he's got Dean Porterfield in there as well. Oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah, no old, no IG Dean. Yeah, okay, here's Chase Swanson taking off in that pretty Tisco truck. Let's see how they do. I know they're. I think this is their second season racing spec trucks. Uh, they've done some trophy light stuff in the past, and Jake's been helping them with their program. And they've got, I believe they have two spec trucks now. Um, definitely doing things right. You know, pre-running proper, prepping proper, chasing proper, and Jake's the man to get that done. It's a 249 Chase Swanson. Yeah, in, in my opinion, I think this is a great spot to be qualifying in. You know, right here in, within that top 10, now getting a good look at this track and this course and the way it's all laid out and the way the things are kind of changing and the corners are, you know, building up and of course certain parts, parts are deteriorating. Uh, this is definitely a good position to be in. There's enough berm to lean into. The holes haven't started developing too big. The sand's getting a little deep, but still manageable to get through. As you can see here, Matt Winslow is still making momentum there through that little sand crossing. 
Um, yeah, that's a pretty deck corner's getting a little a little soft yeah. and deep there. Huh? It's going to get closer and closer to that Chevy. I guarantee yeah. you. Start cutting that corner tighter and tighter. It's, it's almost good that they're there because yeah. it makes them not be able to cut the corner. Yeah, right? It makes it a clipping point, a little yeah. Formula Drift style clipping point. Just put the front bumper right on that. And that little it. S right there is going to get straightened out a little bit yeah. too, right? Yeah. And like, I kind of like that. You know, like <laughs> as a driver, you get a little frustrated with things like that. But hey, man, it's kind of leveling the playing field a bit. It's kind of making it. You got to drive your truck and. You know, doesn't let somebody just go out and run a straight line for a qualifier and whoever can get the best. Oh, 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 oh. Do we put it over? Looks like oh, oh he good. saved it. Oh, oh, man. I hope and somebody got that one on film. That looks like a great turn there. I know the dust. We couldn't <laughs> yeah. see it, right? All you saw was a bunch of dust come up. We didn't know what the result was. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee you we're going to see a solid amount of that in these corners. These guys got to figure out here down in these easy ups. Yeah. That's the spot to watch. Somebody's better get a tow strap ready, though. Yeah. Get things ready to flip them over. This is definitely one, too, where you hopefully you took a good amount of notes on your sight lap and your navigator's on point telling you where to go so you can mentally prepare and get the truck set up for these corners, especially the switch back and forth. Things get real tough through there. So this should be the 294 of Vince Munoz. Uh, Fish and I keep talking. He's a 1450 racer. Still races 1450. Yeah. Raced 1450 the, the other weekend. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, he's getting ready to take off. Um, yeah, it's just cool to see. You know, guys like us, like we all race together, you know, Placer City, MDR days, what have you. And, now Vince is out there doing big races. Yeah, and then you got Adam going later, Adam Householder, another yeah, one, that's it. 50 guy that's throwing down these days, getting some race wins out there. So the, the qualifying course was not open to the public, technically. It wasn't released ahead of time, but it looks like some people have figured <laughs> Had an out idea. where it was, yeah. right? Because there's some spectators out there. <laughs> so, there's a good amount of spectators. That's, yeah. that's yeah. a beautiful... Oh, there's yeah. one, one less course marker yeah. there now. <laughs> but we maybe. don't go by those, but anyways, right? Maybe, that's it's, the GPS maybe it's strategy. <laughs> strategy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so is that a penalty? I don't know. I don't think so. No, not <laughs> no. And that's the beautiful thing about racing down here in Mexico is, you know, it's spectators. It's, it's the best. Cool. Yeah. It really is the best. The, the spectators and the locals of, uh, of Baja are mm -hmm. the best anywhere uh, yeah. in the world. And uh, the further south you get, it just only gets better yeah. in Baja. Yeah, he goes, Vince. Oh, he's rooting for Vince. He's going, he's going pretty good right here, right? That, that can't be Vince driving. That's not driving? He's getting wild. Dean's over there with the gas pedal, I'm guessing. Yeah, that who's like driving? Boat yeah. style is what I'm thinking is going on. <laughs> so... But yeah, always respectful. Vince is, you know, always finishes well, lands himself in good spots. He's always, you know, top ten guy. He's always at the finish line. Um, definitely a very solid contender when it comes to desert racing in every form of it, whether it be 1450 or spec. Uh, I remember like the first year. I think they did spec. They raced spec truck with a spec engine in their 1450 truck for a year. And I want to say he was like doing well in the points because he was just right. there. He was there at the finish at every race. I want to say they finished like top five or something like that in the overall points in a 1450 truck, like a I beamed Ford Ranger. So they definitely know how to do it. All right, we should have some times for you guys in Chase just Wilson, a minute here. Hopefully. Taking an alternative route, maybe a little quicker. Yeah, the dust is just yeah. insane out there. That's going to get so torn up mm -hmm. later, especially once you get the all wheel drives going through Ooh. there. Man. <laughs> yeah, looking These turns are definitely going to get uh, sandy. Some big berms. I think we're going to see some action today on some of these corners for sure. Absolutely. A couple of them, you know, if you if you blow the corner, it's not a big deal. But a couple of these, there is ditches uh, on the sides yeah. of them there. So <laughs> there's definitely a couple corners you do not want to uh, want to blow today. Yep. Lined up here, we got the 242 of Bryce Swaim, Thunderstruck Racing. Uh, very excited to see him out racing again. Yeah, it's been a little while, huh? Yeah, it's been a minute. Uh, got himself a new truck, getting ready to do it. He was very, very, you know, uh, competitive in years past. And so we're all excited to see how this lays out for him. Hopefully he keeps that shiny new truck in one piece around this qualifier and doesn't scratch that pretty paint. But, uh, you know, I don't think he will. They've been down pre-running for the last two weeks, so he's got plenty yep. of seat time. And, uh, you know, he spends a lot of time in the McMillans and all that. So he definitely knows his way around these racetracks. Very good. And that's Vince there yeah. coming around that corner. That is kind of a two-wheel corner. You can see they got that one little hit right there that kind of throws you up, just kind of pops it up for a second. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Sometimes that's the quickest way to get around. If you've got True. the vehicle control and you understand how your car goes, push that thing to that limit and rip right around it. That tree's going to get taken out at some point today. I'd have to say so. Yeah, for sure. That thing's going to be gone later. Yeah, and you'll see later on, too, when we start watching the, like, the trophy trucks, the actual unlimited trophy trucks go through these spots. They'll have the horsepower to kind of get creative with their line choices. In spec oh, yeah. trucks, sometimes you kind of just got a slot car because if you try and get out of the two track, it almost hurts you more than it's going to help you being in the fresher dirt. Whereas the uh, trophy trucks themselves have the power to kind of climb up and out. 
Yeah, there's no, you know, you lose momentum in a spec truck, you're really, you're, you're in trouble for a little bit. You need to keep that momentum up. Yeah. There you go, 242 right, Bryce Swaim off the line. Pretty new Tisco truck. I think he's got, probably got Garrett Stone there in the passenger seat doing some navigating for him. This is this truck's first race. They've been out testing it, putting some miles on it here and there. It's a new generation Tisco truck. Um, like we talked before, uh, unlimited chassis, 40 inch tall tires, or unlimited tires essentially. Uh, three speed turbo 400 automatic transmissions and 525 horsepower LS3s. That's and what that, these trucks are consistent of. That is uh, new this year. They're gonna be after this race, you are not allowed to rebuild your engine anymore. Oh, right? Yeah. Score changed the rules this year. They are not allowing rebuilds. So this, this race you could have because some people already had an engine being rebuilt after the thousand or they didn't race mm -hmm. thousand, they already had an engine. But starting after this race, you're gonna have to use a stock sealed from the factory engine, no rebuilds. Yeah, which is yeah. Up for discussion. There's a little bit of controversy <laughs> yeah, around it, right? Just a you touch got of controversy. You got people that like it, you got people that don't. Uh huh. So, uh, yeah. Vince out there running good and strong. He took that corner good and well. He's got some speed there. Didn't take the Chase Swanson line there, cutting between the trees. He's sticking to the track. Yeah, those people have a pretty good spectating spot right there. I'd say it's just so. a, it's yeah. a little bit. It would be sketchy if it was during the race and there was more than one car coming Fair. at a time, Fair. right? Because yeah. someone in the dust could just go straight into uh -huh. it. Right there. But today, hopefully, it's clear. Yeah. By the time they get there, not an ideal spot to be spectating. If you guys are watching this, <laughs> yeah. do not spectate no. in a spot like that during the race, please, because Terrible. it would be a very bad spot to be in mm -hmm. in the dust. Yeah. And anybody out there, if you are spectating, you're watching this, like send them videos in, tag us, do whatever you got to do. We love seeing this type of stuff. Tag Score International. Uh, direct message it to them, what have you. We love seeing all the content from, from any of these races or anything in the dirt. Yeah, that's definitely, we were talking about Starlink earlier at the same time. Everybody on course has a cell phone recording everything now. Yeah. Right? Anything you do at any point in time during a race is on camera. Yeah. Bryce Swain there, putting his foot down, running through the trees. Looks pretty quick through there, honestly. Made some good traction, some good forward bite. Let's see if he keeps it on the ground. There you go. I think this is the corner that uh, caught Matt Winslow. We'll see how he takes this corner. No, maybe it's the one further off down the road. Looking smooth and fast. That's what it takes. Like Fish was saying earlier, with these spec trucks, you don't want to give up anything. It's, it's, I don't know if most of you guys have probably driven, you know, uh, family fun style go-karts or K1 go-karts. And if you touch the barrier or you drag the brake just a little too long or you bobble one little corner, it takes you a whole lap to catch that speed back up. So very similar here in these spec trucks. You guys want to keep them moving forward as smooth as possible. So let's see, next on the line, we're gonna have, let's see, did Ryan Hancock start mm -hmm. yet? Did we see him go? I have not, there he goes right now. There he is. The 228 Perfect. of Ryan Hancock, the Alexander Ford entry. Got Jordan Pool cool in there, mm -hmm. co-driving. Yep. Evan Weller's listed also, so we got Evan Weller down there with them yeah. this time. I, I do believe Jordan is driving. I had spoke with the, Riding, I'm sorry. Uh, I. Spoke with Evan earlier this week, and he said he wasn't planned to ride in anything, but he had his name on a few entries just in case he was needed. Yeah, as a backup. Yeah. Yeah, and if you guys aren't familiar, a lot of, some people will do that. Uh, they'll put their name on there, so at least they get a wristband. If you have a wristband, you can ride in multiple trucks. As long mm -hmm. as you are registered Correct. at some point in the race yep. with one team, you can ride mm -hmm. in a different truck if you need to, exactly. or drive either way. Yeah. And that's something to think, you know, your, your navigator gets sick, you hit something, maybe you get hurt in the truck and want to get out yeah, or whatever. You never know. Yeah, you don't want to go out there by yourself. Or you have some bad tacos the night before the race. Fair. That's yeah. always that's always a tough one. Uh huh. Too many sodas, you know. Yeah. Oh, There's, he's going real wide there yeah, on that one, huh? Might be quick, you know, keeps yeah. the momentum moving. We'll see what he does to the trees here. Where he runs the, the straight line or cuts through the berm. Yep, down through the berm. That's the two forty two Bryce Swain there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised people aren't going straighter right there, honestly. Yeah. It might have been a discussion in the driver's meeting that we're not aware of, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I would be straightening that out a little bit. Some of the guys later will, for sure. So the one thing I don't see on this course, I don't see any uh, real whoops. Oh, look at this. We got we got a local on course. Oh, Did boy. you get around him okay? Yeah, it looks like him. it. I wonder if he'll ask for a rerun or not. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't look like it affected him nah, too much there. It should be too okay. Much. That's not ideal either. If you guys are watching this and you're out on the course, please stay off the course. Don't, yeah. don't go near the course. Stay. Park your car. Yeah, hang park, out. Park your car. Hang out. Have a few cervezas and sit there for the day. That's it. And yeah. watch some action. Don't don't get near the course. Stay safe. Stay away from the course. Absolutely. Uh, next up on the line should be the 277. Uh, the entry of Travis William. 
I'm Williams. I'm not sure who's driving. I saw on the Instagram that I think Travis had hurt his back. Pre yeah, it looked like he had an accident during mm -hmm. pre-running and hurt a uh, vertebrae, mm -hmm. one of vertebrae or something. He was in the hospital. He was going to be okay. Yeah. He got a thumbs up. Yeah. But he's not okay to be in the car, obviously. Yeah. So we're not sure who's in the driver's seat for that one. Uh, he's got a pretty solid list of navigators here. So I don't know if Pete's driving, Luke or Jeff Nup. Um, I, I mean, because I mean, his brother, I think, or no, it's just him. Yeah. I think they're only running one truck. Here. We know it's not Travis driving today. Right. That's what we do. We do know that. <laughs> so this is Bryce Swain. Should be coming into the finish here in just a second. Should be almost done with his lap. So we have three cars out on the course at the same time, it looks like. Almost, if Travis Williams gets out there before he finishes. So we have Swaim, and then we have Hancock going to be behind him. He's about halfway done with his run. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I don't see any whoops. I was trying to see if we see whoops anywhere. I haven't seen any yet. Nope. nope. No whoops. Pretty mellow. I mean, some stuff's going to build up and, and progress and show up as more trucks run through. But um, other than that, I think it's going to be a pretty mellow qualifier when it comes to big bumps and jumps type of stuff. It is Pete Tolaire driving the Travis Williams truck. There got, we go. I got the text as well. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> Just got confirmation. Yeah. Mark O'Day sent me a text. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Thanks for the info. Appreciate it. There thanks for the best I'll converters find. in the industry, honestly. <laughs> yeah. And that's something we've talked about in the past, too, is uh, when it comes to spec trucks. So you think about a sealed engine, everybody's got the same motor, same transmission. Where you really find your fine tuning is in your tor torque converters, your underdrive gearing, and your ring and pinion gearing. Yeah, that's and all just, open, right? It's there's, all there's open. no rules to the yep. gearing, just the type mm -hmm. of transmission you have to use. Anything Absolutely. else is open. Exactly. Yeah. And like finding somebody or a company or a team of people that are willing to go out and do some testing with you and, you know, provide you some options and some products yeah. to make your car that much faster is the advantage you need to land yourself in the top spot here at these races. You can see that is the Alexander Ford entry right there going around Ryan Hancock. Yeah. So one of the things like we were just talking about, the gearing is optional in these cars. Yep. So sometimes if you guys are watching to feed it, and I've heard a lot of drivers complain about this before too, they'll be on like a lake bed, for example, oh, and yeah. another spec truck will just come and go right by them. And they're oh, like, yeah. Well, that truck's cheating. They're, they were way faster than me. It's, it's all like, set up. Well, it's all set up. They might be way slower off the line. Another local. Than you oh. are. It's See? Another local. Perfect example. <laughs> yeah. Hey, black truck in the black Chevy 1500. If you're out here on Starlink, get off the dang course. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, no, absolutely. Because you know your overall top speed is dependent on your ring and pinion. You got to think. Yep. Most of these trucks have rev limits set 7200 RPM, and if you do your math, you're one to one. Break it all the way down to your ring, like to your final drive ratio. There is a mathematical equation at how fast your tire should spin. Yes. So it's like most of these guys are within top speeds of, you know, 115 to 120. You know, you hear the guys, you know, BS in here and there, oh, I did 125, and that, that one's hard to believe. Like, I have hard to, yep. But if you're in touching on 120, 117, like, you've got a good setup when it comes to lake beds. But you got to remember, like, off-road racing is a game of averages. You want to make sure you have a quick truck in the corners. You want to have a quick truck in the bumps quick truck in the straightaways and then the Man lake bed. Aircraft. So you really yeah. want to make sure, you know, you don't Fly want to be the fastest guy in the lake bed and just completely Fly eaten up in the turns. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't need the fastest approaching. turning truck and get eaten alive in the straightaway. Safe so you got to find that balance to where maybe you give Fly up a little caution. bit here to make it up somewhere else and hoping at the end Man of the day aircraft. it all adds up to, you know, you being the shortest amount of time on the oh, racetrack. No, oh, that no, that is an Alexander truck. Ryan ah, Hancock. Oh, they get on, on the, the wheels? wheels? Is it? It is. On the gas, on the gas. on the wheels. Go, go. They're going. There it is. All the way over. Beautiful. That is extra style points right there for Ryan Hancock. Look at Jordan Poole's in there like, go, 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 go. Yep. It's just the body, most likely just body damage. Absolutely. That was a really sm uh, slow roll. Yeah. What <laughs> a we short got... course way to do it. I right? love it. <laughs> I didn't know if it was going to land on the wheels because it was like teeter-tottering. Yeah. I think Jordan jumped up and down a couple times real quick and got that thing to come down on the wheels. But uh, honestly, it didn't really cost them that much time if they can keep the rest of this run clear right here. But uh, we're, we're going to see some more of that on this course, 100%, for sure. A hundred percent. Man, that's a perfect scenario. Yeah. That's a veteran off-road racer right there. Not being shook up, knowing that you're safe and your gear's there doing yeah. its job, back on the gas. Maybe, maybe we can get a, a replay if we can get the guys to rewind that. Maybe we can get a replay of that and show you guys exactly what happened if you missed it. Uh, we'll see if we can get the guys to work on that. That is Travis Williams right here in the 277. Travis Williams entry with Pete Tolaire driving. Like we said, Travis Williams injured his back. That's a newer guy's truck. Right. That's a G6 We got a truck. replay. We got a Let's replay. See. Let's check it out. Here is Ryan Hancock, Jordan Poole, right here. Came in the corner a little hot, caught the inside berm, threw him up, and then look right here. It's teetering, and then it falls down if you look real close. It just barely made it all the way over. 
really only what counted like, like six, seven, six seconds, six, six or seven seconds. seconds. Yeah, yeah, didn't perfect. Lose much time. Let it ride. I mean, in spec, that's going to be tough to make back up. Like it we is. talk, like these are going to stack up. But hey, you're not going to be dead last. No, no, definitely. <laughs> Did, and you got the coolest bad. story. <laughs> I mean, you got so style far. points so far. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're ahead on the style points list. Yeah. So. Gotta stick a body back together, but yeah, who cares about the body, right? Yeah. They probably have a spare body. I wouldn't know. I would hope. <laughs> Well, they're in, they're just from Yuma, so they're not that far away. They can just drive back up there and get another body from just the shop. Just a jaunt to. across town. Yeah, <laughs> it's not too far away. Yeah. So shown here is the 277 Travis Williams. I'm assuming that the 282 of Brent Fox has already taken off because it looks like they're on the starting grid. It looks like a Brenthal body, which would be the 266 and 266 entry of David Ziegler. Okay. There yep. There's yep. Brent Fox right there on the track. Silver so, and red always easy to spot too, right? Easy. Yeah. And talk about, I, I had a moment to talk with him at a race recently, and he was telling me, because I had asked him, like, man, because his name's on an entry list at every race. Yeah, he races every race. Yeah, he said he did 12 races last year. Yeah. He's going to tone it down a little bit this year. He has two trucks now, so he can kind of alleviate the prep guys a little bit. Yeah. Um, but he was telling, I was talking to him, like, man, you do so many races. And he explained to me that when he was younger and growing up and starting his business, he wanted to race trophy trucks so bad. And now in life, he's at a position to where he can do it. So he's going to do it as much as he can. Lila. He's like, I'm going to do this until I'm bored of it. And I don't think I'm ever going to get bored of this. <laughs> so any race I can get a truck to, I'm going to enter it and go race it. I don't care where it is, what it is, who it is. I'm there. I want to go racing, which is the greatest like outlook on off-road racing, in my opinion, is just go out there, have fun, and do it as much as you can. Yeah, and do it while you can. Yeah, exactly. Right? You never know how long you'll be able to, like you said. So go yeah, life's do a it, wild thing, man. You gotta take 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 the opportunities when you get them. There's not much more things. There's not many things you could go do that is more fun than what we're seeing right here. No. This this is this is awesome. Yeah. I mean, well, why do you think so many people come out to just watch it? Because uh-huh. it's epic, right? Yeah. Well, watching trophy trucks, trophy truck specs. You, class 11s get the biggest, <laughs> you know, spectator cheers out of anybody because yeah. those things just go through this course like it's nothing. Uh-huh. And those guys are animals. Anybody that drives a class 11 car is insane. Oh, 100%. So uh, th- this is, you can be drinking coffee in these trucks. Look at that. He's got some body panels missing oh! and some tree on there already. There it <laughs> is. Fox truck. That's a run for a qualifier. <laughs> Man. Yeah, don't worry about the car. Just get it to the finish. That's all that matters. Yeah. Were those Grabowski bedsides he had on there? Looks that like it. Yeah. Taking some tips. Got 266 there, the Brent Ball truck of David Ziegler. Is that the 203 we got there, or the 213 maybe? Whose truck was that? Who's there? It could be the. They were. Uh, oh yeah, I'm the sorry. 213? The 213 of Josh. Yes, yep. but yeah, the 213. Yep. So we're off there on that one. Sorry. I'm not super familiar with that truck. I haven't seen that one that many times before. So that, that's not the 266. That's the 213 right there. That is Josh uh, Bear. However you say it. Uh huh. From uh, New Mexico. Yep. <laughs> He it has does Jacob look Carver in there. Yeah, it does look like a Brenthal chassis to me with the way that the uh, fuel cell is set up and the spares are set up. So I assume that's what that is. So David Ziegler is going to be the card next so, behind yep. him. That's probably sitting on the start line right now. And we're we're still waiting to get some times for you guys. As soon as we get the times, I will read them off. I know I've gotten about 50 text messages from everybody asking for time so far. So as soon as we have them, I will give them to you guys for sure. Brent Fox coming around. So one thing we were talking about earlier is we were talking about setup, right, and yep. gearing. Mm-hmm. Now, today, if you're watching this course right now and you're racing a trophy truck later, hmm. I would be changing the gearing right now. Yeah. Because if you have all the these means. guys that have trophy trucks have, same with a lot of these spec guys, if you're racing later, it doesn't take that long to change the no. gearing in these things. Yes. Right? How, how long does it take you to change the gearing? Either in, Would you change the uh, underdrive or would you change the actual rear gear? It depends on the, the make of the underdrive. So there's certain underdrives that are easier to change the gear sets in okay. than it is the diff. Some underdrives, it's easier just to change the diff out. And how long do you think in one of those it would take you to make a change? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. All right. So if you went out on this course, you did your practice lap, Mm -hmm. you have plenty of time to make a gearing change if you want to. Yeah, I would think so. Especially if you have like a a Mason style underdrive where it's like the back case and then it's flip-flopping gears, almost like a, like a quick change rear end is. Yep. Flip-flop things around. It is much easier to do that than it is to pull axles, pull diff, reseal diff, reinstall diff, re-axle, re-hubcap, all that stuff. And it's a lot cleaner to just do a transmission one, one fluid than gear yes. oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so by taking that into note, if you did that earlier, you're like, hey, we don't need top speed today. Obviously, no. top speed does not matter you on this corner course. To corner, it's corner, all sure. corner to corner. Mm-hmm. So would you go, you would go up a gear or which way would that, would you go on that? To get I would more definitely, low, low end. Yeah, torque? I would kind of, I would eliminate some of the top Line speed there. Top. I would definitely go for more of like a, a lower end bite, Torque's something that's going to pull you out of the corners and alleviate first gear. But 
I don't know. It's kind of a tough call because there are a couple of spots there, especially in the spec trucks where you can get these things revved out pretty good. But I think you're right. I think I would stick with more of a qualifying setup, like a like a 680 final drive versus like the 620 or something. Sort of. Yeah, get a little bit more out of the corners here. Just I mean, look at this. It's corner after corner on a lot of this course, right? Yeah, you don't need 117 miles an hour here. I don't even think you're in the top of third gear on yeah, this course yeah. much at all. You need like 80 or 90 at most. Yeah. And if you're that much faster between 30 to 50, yeah, that's going to make a bit of a difference. So I bet I bet we see some guys run a different ratio today than we will in the race on Saturday. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and something to think too is just longevity of the transmission because you do have time. Obviously, it being Thursday, you still have all day tomorrow if you need to make changes or uh, fixes to your car post qualifying. But uh, you know, if you run that. Uh, more of like a desert gear, more of like a top speed ring and pinion, you're going to be using your first gear a lot more than you're going to use second and third. Yep. And in these Turbo 400 transmissions, first gear is a little bit fragile. Like I, I've always been taught to stay away from first gear. Yeah. Most, like <clears throat> the fast dudes just let it rip. They don't care. They'll slam it right into that gear and let her eat. <laughs> well, especially shifting down into Ooh, it, yeah, yeah, right? You, never, you don't want to shift yeah, down into first. Because those planetary stop and rotate <clears throat> directions and it does scary things inside the ring and pinion, inside those transmissions. So Yeah. They can <laughs> literally explode like a bomb. <laughs> yeah. I've seen that before. Uh -huh. Yeah. Some Which people, is, unfortunately, Unfortunately, have been have yep. been hurt by that before, uh -huh. so you yeah. never want that to happen. No, so yeah, you know, if you put yourself more of in the qualifying setup that you know gets you more bottom bottom end, more like lower end torque, you can leave that truck in second, third gear more than you would if you were more like a desert setup. Yeah, that totally makes sense. All right, so who are we at here? This is going to be Tanner Rust. Did we yep. see Tanner Rust go yet? Yeah, so Tanner Rust in the 289. Uh, he's in a geyser truck. Just purchased it. He was racing in an older. I don't remember what the chassis was, but uh, this is his first run in a geyser truck. I know geyser just went through it and converted it. It was a trophy truck previously, converted to a spec truck, which is very common in this class. Okay. Um, he's a local guy here. Actually, what's funny, we're here in El Cajon at the SCORE headquarters. His trucking yard, because they own truck and, uh, Rust and Sons Trucking, is literally across the, yeah, right across the street. Yeah, yep. I drove by it on the way in. I yep. was like, oh, it's, I remember mm -hmm. that name or that symbol from somewhere before. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, so uh, Tanner Rust and his family, they are just uh, dirt movers. They are uh, truck drivers. So very cool to see him out here doing it. They're going to move some dirt today. I, yeah, that's it. He's got a whole life of dirt. That's what he's into, I guess. <laughs> They're just going to use tires to move it instead <laughs> of tractors. So, and, yeah, and not trucks. so much the dump trucks. Oh, blew that corner a little yeah. bit there. Going outside a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is that David Ziegler, Ziegler there? I believe so, yeah. In the D 266. Yep. The DNA carpentry truck, yep. Brenthal entry. So we're about maybe a third of the way through our trophy truck specs so far. Need a little bit of wind to change direction. We've got 15 of them off the line right now. So yeah, look at that. A at third, that. I didn't even count it yet, and there's 45. 45, a third of 45, 15. We're uh -huh. 15 off the line. Uh huh. Look at you. It's That'll like you've done this be before. That's probably my only math that yeah. you did today. But Don't ask me. we got to get the camera guy to move a little bit, though. <laughs> yeah. Those darn method flags are in the way of our starting line. <laughs> get <laughs> them the things out of the way. <laughs> so if you guys are looking at the start there, they start at a stop under the, the uh, Method march. race wheels arch, yep. 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 And then the time actually starts at the first flag. So mm -hmm. you get a running start. That's the first time that SCORE has done this in a qualifier. Yeah. It's a little bit different. You get a running start today. You can see there they go, and their time starts right about there. Mm -hmm. It's the start of your time. Yep, and that's the 289 to Tanner Russ, that we were just talking. In the bottom right, 266. Uh -huh. David Ziegler is up top. This is Tanner Rust, 289. I know he gets a lot of guidance from Jason McNeil, so I'm assuming that this he, eventually he's going to be very quick in these things, if not already. <laughs> yeah, and you know, speaking of Jason McNeil, he should be next on the line. Cool. He's going right behind him today. So you think they were talking a little bit of smack at the start line if they're lined up next to each other? When does Jason not talk smack? Let's be really. Right? I mean, he can back it up too, right? Yeah, so. oh, absolutely. He can talk as much as class, he wants. He has the 200 number, Jason McNeil. So mm -hmm. what does that mean? It means okay. he's a class champion from last year. Yep. And he is also the one that has finished the highest overall, I believe, ever in a race. The third? Did anybody get second overall? No, third? no, no. Justin right. Bean Smith overall the race in a spec truck. Well, I'm t oh, in it, score. I'm talking about in score. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, score in a score race, yes. I yeah. believe Jason McNeil is the mm -hmm. highest finisher at third. Yes. And that was last year. It's insanely impressive. You got to think when when the guys behind you have a thousand horsepower and you've got. 500. Yeah, like, it's yeah, very impressive. Yeah. I think that was, was that the 500 or the 400? I think it was the 500. I don't know. I forget. It's too many races. What, what does the book of the piece say? Nobody remembers who won the race, but they do remember who was fastest through main pit. 
They remember who rolls during qualifying and keeps going. That's the same thing as being fast through it, right? They remember something like that. That's yeah. it. That is it. 266, putting, putting it down, doing well, keeping it in board momentum, and that's what it's all about when it comes to qualifying. You don't want to slow down. You don't want to bury yourself into a corner and lose some speed. You just got to keep it moving. It's the name of the game when it comes to off-road racing. Never want to stop the car. So we have the 213 should be finishing any time now. Then the 266 is the one we just saw. And then this is your class champion right here, Jason McNeil. This is going to be a fun run to watch on a course like this because he uh -huh. is going to be throwing that car around this whole course. Big time. Yeah. Going for it. Jason does not want to qualify second. No. He wants to qualify first. Uh -huh. And he doesn't care. It's checkers or wreckers for Jason. Right now. This is going to be exciting. Hopefully we have a drone that we can just follow him the whole way. That would be the And best. that would be an epic six minutes of footage, just watching him the whole way. Somebody needs to drive to Jason's shop, put a Starlink on his roof, and get that onboard stuff figured out, because we would all benefit from watching they're this. Supposed to, they're supposed to have it. For Jason? Yes. Ooh. Yeah, they're supposed to have it going. They were testing it the other day, so I don't all know right. if they got it working or not, but they were, they were testing it. So for race day for sure, hopefully we'll have that. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah Jason's wild. Like, I, like I've said in the past, and I'll say this at every, you know, broadcast I'm ever in. Anybody with a last name McNeil is fast. Well, according to Pistol Pete, his last name is Mick Squirrel. Sure. Yeah. So that's what yeah. Pistol Pete called him. And, <laughs> you know, back in the day, Jason was a little bit more squirrely than he is nowadays. I think you have to be you squirrely know. to be fast, though. You do. <laughs> you but you also have to out. know where the edge is <laughs> yeah. in order to finish races, right? I think he's Obviously, found class the champion knows where the edge is now. He's able to finish races and be very fast while yeah. he's doing that. So th this should be a very fast run right here, Jason McNeil. And then that's going to be Kevin Shields pulling up to the line. So here we go. Watch, watch this, folks. If you want some action, I promise you, this will be one of the most action-packed runs you will watch in all of qualifying today. Yep. Jason McGill. Look, oh, look how fast they're already. Going. Yep. Already, you can you can tell the speed. The drone isn't even up to speed. I wish you would have followed him a little longer. <laughs> Jones going back home. Yeah, going back home. <laughs> so just just look on the course where some of these cars are going. Look at the speed they're going, and then watch if we have that same camera angle when Jason comes through there, and you'll see the difference. Yeah. Not, nothing against the rust entry here. Just, no. Just insane to compare. Jason's just a lunatic. Yes. Let's be real here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, it's not just chalking up to that. I mean, Jason has miles and miles and miles of experience down here in Baja and racing in general. And, yes. And just probably more miles in race cars than most people. Like, you know, you'll see old pictures of the whole McNeil family, like, in little go-karts when they're kids and all the way up. And I know, I, th I think they're pretty much, like, the... Uh, the reigning forever champions of the Del Mar Tough Trucks. I don't think anybody will knock a McNeil off of their throne over there. So yeah. just any opportunity they have to drive a race car, they're in it. So. And Jason doesn't care if he rips body panels off either because I think he knows a guy uh, to yeah. get panels from, he might, right? He might know a dude. Yeah. Might know a dude. Look at the, the drone can't even keep up with him here in these sections. That is definitely Jason Mignot. Look, look at him throwing yep. it sideways it into the corner. I'm telling you guys, we got to get the drone to follow him because this is going to be awesome. You see this little tight S turn here? That, that's a big drop right there. So that's where I think High Rev is posted up. Probably gonna have some good pictures of video coming off that drop uh -oh. later. In social. the trees. Into the trees. Yeah. yeah. It's all right. <laughs> not, not surprising. No. Where's <laughs> that section? Throwing up a lot of roost. This, this track is getting torn up pretty quick. Big time. You can see how soft a lot of these turns are getting. They're losing a lot of speed in these turns. So this should be going up to T12, I believe. And sweep left, with drop down. There's a little bit of whoops right there. Yeah, they're just actually breaking, breaking holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at him there flying through is. the corner. That's Here we go. Our guy. Look at him saying, "Go, go, go!" You On see him? the pipe. <laughs> he's saying, "Go straight, straight." Oh, hard right, hard right. <laughs> he's got it. <laughs> hard That's right. a professional right there. A co-driver needs to get his hand off that bar, though. Whoever that is, somebody, on. somebody yell at that guy. You do not want to hold on to that bar right there. That is the worst bar to hold on to. Navigates here through these S's. There you go. Yep. Cut the top right off. Cut that corner in. There you go. That's, That's how you get getting that straightened section. out a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah. You just want to make sure you're set up for this little down one because there's really no option down through that. So looks like we got the 247 off the line of Kevin Shields. 
I believe they're in an Alumacraft truck. They're local uh, East County boys. Uh, and it's funny that you've got Rust, McNeil, and Shields because they all race together. They're all buddies. They're all buddies? Yeah, their families all hang out and all that stuff. So And they're all lined up together? <laughs> yeah, so I'm sure the last couple hours of them hanging out in tag or in lineup is probably a darn good time. Yeah. They're a whole bunch of jokesters. Yeah. A whole bunch of jokesters right there. I'll tell that you that actually makes it more fun, though. Yeah. Right? Like you're hanging out with your buddies before qualifying, mm-hmm. talk a little smack. Knocks the edge off a little bit. Yeah, it makes it more fun. Yeah, if we get some time, you'd be super excited I'm, to see where... I'm being told I'm going to have some soon, but soon. Okay. hopefully that's true. Yeah. These are going to be unofficial times, as always. All the times we get here are unofficial. The official times will be calculated uh, at the end of the day. Once if there's any penalties or anything anybody gets, we don't know about those until later. There's Tanner Russ coming in for a finish. All the body panels on. Roof's still intact. That's a Jason's win for Hunter. All the panels on? Yeah, those Tisco trucks are pretty good at keeping the bedsides alive. They're, the body's kind of mounted up high and away yeah. from the ground. And the Tisco trucks, I don't know if you guys are noticing here at home, but they sit a little bit taller than, say, like the Herb Smith trucks or the Lumicraft trucks. Uh, a little bit taller truck, kind of geyser-ish, you know. Um, Look at Jason. He is flying. on the pipe. This is going to be your new fast time guaranteed right here. Drone guys are getting warmed up for tomorrow. <laughs> Or Saturday, there we go. There, we go. there yep. we go. Oh, Just that's carrying a big momentum drop all right the there. Around. Let's see. Just hauling through the drop. Yep. Got a hard right. And back mm-hmm. to the left. Oh yeah. Oh, jumps up and over. That's a great spot to hang out right there to watch. Yeah, that's a good view. A tight left. Hard left. Here. Is this the left where? Uh, Next one. Hancock's coming uh-huh. up to Should it. Should be right here. Right there. Yep. A little okay. off camera. Makes sense. Yeah. Good. Yeah, they just clipped that the berm on the inside is mm-hmm. what, screwed, what screwed them up and threw mm-hmm. them over. Look at Jason here on the pipe. Yeah, you gotta reel it back in. Whoa. So as okay, much as you right. want to be fast, you gotta know when to be slow too. Do rather reel it back in and drop it in. That was a good line right there. Uh-huh. That's somebody who understands the dynamics of the vehicle. Oh, look at oh, that thing. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> oh man. So this is the spot we gotta be careful too. If you look, see all the ledges all the way around and all the drop-offs on the backsides? You can You wanna keep it in the track right there, <laughs> absolutely. That will will end your qualifying uh-huh. most likely if you blow those. Oh, Whoa, look at that. Up there on it two is wheels. on the gas. There we go. And then coming back. Oh no, come on drone. Coming into the corner. We need more satellites. <laughs> oh, All right. well it was fun while it lasted. Yeah, got a 247 <laughs> here. Cockstar racing, Kevin Shields. Well, I'm told that Jason just got a new, uh, some new shock package yesterday too, so. Oh, exciting. It looks like, uh, it's always good to go to qualifying right after a new shock package. Uh-huh. I think that's Jason still running it there is. to the finish. Yep, a little bit more composed Flags. than people we've seen in the past. Tons of momentum. Beautiful. There you go. All the panels Beautiful are still on. Run. All right. Yeah, so, that was a great run mm-hmm. for Jason McNeil. That's going to be our, our highest qualifier so far for sure. I would think so too. Uh, right before we cut back to Jason, we saw the 258 of Maverick Gaunt. Uh, I know, I think that's the only Gaunt entry on the list, so I would assume they're potentially running. They have a brand new geyser truck. I believe they have two G6s now. So I'm not sure if they're racing the new truck or the older truck, uh, both very similar trucks. Um, but yeah, always they were very good too, and like class five and other form, other classes of racing. So it's cool to see them in spec truck. They're always a good contender. All right, I am getting some times in, so stand by. I'm writing them down. We'll have them in just a second for you guys. Two forty-seven. There, Kevin Shields in the Alumacraft truck, navigating through that corner, nice, and, nice and fast. Like I said I think those guys in that little pocket right there got a good spot to spectate from. But man, are they gonna have to do some serious car washing when they're done? Oh, oh, oh! Just doing it's a good. little, just doing a little gardening. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, a little shrubbery maintenance, but we're all right. Here on the line, we got the 211 of Tim Wilson in an ES Motorsports truck. I want to say he finished third at the 1000, which is very impressive. Very solid finish for these guys. Um, great, great group of dudes. Uh, fast drivers, fast trucks. Um, I have had the opportunity to race with them in the past, door to door. They're gentlemen's on the racetrack, but real fun to battle with. So I always rooting for these guys and you know, hope they put a good qualifying run down. <laughs> All right, so I have sometimes, these are all very unofficial 
here. It looks like we have Thor and EJ. One of them is an 844 and one of them is an 850. That seems, that seems pretty long. Eight minutes. I mean, well, we can figure this out here. We can try and keep track here of the 211 Tim Wilson. If there's any way we can make sure we see the finish there, we've got to get yeah, these, average speed. Yeah, these are not Eight minutes seems a bit no, it's, long it's for right. five miles. Sorry, guys. We'll have some times hopefully correct for you soon. There's the Tim Wilson going off the line at 9.35. So those of you at home, let's keep track of this and kind of see where this lap runs because he's a pretty solid average qualifying pace. You know, he's going to be in the top 10, I would assume. Um, as long as he has a nice clean run. Easy to spot yellow out there on the racetrack. That's something you gotta think about, man. If you want those photos, you want those videos, you gotta make sure your truck pops. Make sure it stands out, something to see. So we'll try and keep track there of the 211 of Tim Wilson. He left the line at 9.35, so we'll kind of get an idea of when he comes back around and what lap times are looking like they're going to be. Hot. Next there on the line is the 297 of George San Pedro. Uh, so he's in a Mason truck there, Mason two-wheel drive, spec truck, obviously. Uh, that's another rule there for the spec truck racing is that uh, it has to be rear-wheel drive only. No all-wheel drives, no four-wheel drives, no tomfoolery there, just live axle in the back. <laughs> Tim Wilson, there we go. That's a, that's a fast truck a yeah. lot of these races too, right? Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people, not like super, uh, I don't know, like they're not all out there, they're not all over social, you don't yep. see a lot of people talking about but they're actually really fast. Super fast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Look at their results, it's a really fast team. Yeah, every race they enter, they're top five. Oh, so we got a big caution here, so we got an upside down truck. Oh Looks yeah, like Maybe it's the 258 at Gaunt. Uh-oh. Oh no. Oh no. So that Rolled is the- In the corner. Darn it. What's that truck doing? How come they're not pulling him over yet? I don't know. Maybe he's getting, well, we're getting freaking dizzy. Yeah. So that's a 258 of Maverick Gaunt. That's unfortunate. That's a brand new Geyser G6 truck. Looks like the Navigator's out and safe. I would assume that's in there. Um, man, that's not, not a great way to start your qualifier. Looks like both of those guys out of the truck. I see two guys there in driving suits. So maybe Keith Smith there in the passenger seat. Wondering if we got any footage of that roll over there. I'm assuming not. If the drone caught up to it, there may be yeah, somebody right. watching. The drone was on the other car, most likely when it happened. Yeah. Here's the 211 again of Tim Wilson. Yeah, this is the shot we needed for Jason McNeil here. This follow a long run. Yeah, this is the whole time. Yeah, just, but just this stay with him. Yeah, but this is. Oh, there it is. Yep. Carry the momentum. <laughs> much, much like Jason, just on the pipe, nice and smooth. Don't want to give too much up. This is gonna be another good run. Like I said, you know, these guys are fast, they kind of fly under the radar a little bit. They're always fast. I don't think they've won a race yet. Won a, not not a, score a score race, race. No, no, yeah. no, If you ever want to see the coolest mustache in the world, though, go meet Tim Wilson. That guy's got one heck of a mustache, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. <laughs> well, yep. there we go. They're out of the car. Yep. That Keith, looks good. Yep, Maverick Gaunt there holding the strap. Keith Smith in the passenger seat. Have a little discussion there with Is that the a... What kind of fire suit is that? that? That's a cool design on there. Is that overalls? Yeah, suspenders? that's what it looks like going on there. Right? It's a yeah. suspender Suspender design. overall setup. A suspender with yeah. overalls on your driving suit. Uh -huh. that's, that might be one of the coolest driving suits I've seen yeah, in a absolutely. while, actually. That's a cool design yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was a good group of dudes there. The, the Gaunts, they're uh, like circle track racers, like sprint car guys, like yep. dirt track guys. Just some good old boys. <laughs> All right, I'm being told that Jason McNeil has the fastest time with a 6.18. So I, I know that much for you guys. Jason McNeil has the lowest time with a 618. Beyond that, I don't have much for you guys yet. So those of you at home, here's a great opportunity to look at some of the trickery that goes on here with these uh, spec trucks with some of the aero packaging and all that stuff. If you look at the roof scoop here, some kind of direct airflow and all that. So 
when it comes to spec truck racing, like we've talked, you know, you've got that sealed engine. You know, you can do what you do when it comes to ring and pinions and underdrives and gear ratios and converters and all that. But then you got to think you're driving a giant parachute down a lake bed. So anything you can do to kind of try and manipulate that air to work in your favor, it definitely helps. And it looks like this is a team that puts that effort, like we had spoke earlier. Come from sprint cars, come from circle tracks, and that's a huge part of all that. So I'm sure they've got a couple of tricks and tips there going on with that car, trying to direct the air the right way. This dude in the hat's got it figured out. Shirt off, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. This right? guy's already partying. He's he's already partying. How many uh, we are in the do you think he's had already? <laughs> More than you and I. There's that's a cooler in the back of the truck right there, I'm pretty yeah. sure, or somewhere. What's this Toyota going on? They uh -oh. locked them front hubs in. You're in two-wheel drive. All right. Oh, we got enough oh, guys a, here. We got a guy here in rip-up pants. Let's see if we get them over. Out. Yeah, we got enough dudes. They're stuck just from being parked there. Yep. Now we've got a real situation That's going definitely two-wheel drive only, though. Uh-huh. All right, this could be exciting. Oh, look, they can, they can get to get over oh, with that yeah. many guys. A little rock action. I don't know, man. When that rear end swung out that far, it's going to take a minute. If they get the truck to help a little bit, it'll probably work. Following back through, Tim Wilson coming around. Yep. Still, dude, shirtless dude needs to get to work there. He looks like he's got the most force out of any of them. What we got going on here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this guy needs to put them Cerveza powers to work. Yeah. Well, they, they, obviously their run is over at this point, right? There's, yeah. Oh, yeah I mean, do you even do you even finish at this point? Maybe because you might start ahead of somebody that DNFs, right? Yeah, it, it depends on how it's laid out. I, I I'm not quite sure on the logistics of the score rules. Uh, I know in other sanctioning bodies, if you do not finish your qualifier, you start time behind the last qualifier. Yeah, Which but that's that's ones that count the time though, exactly. right? Exactly. So I mean, yeah, at this point it might be safe to just drag the thing or drive the thing back to the pit, inspect some issues and just realize you're about to have a very long Saturday of chasing dust. Yes, you're you're going to be starting in the back, which mm -hmm. is not the way you want to start your new no. uh 2024 score season off, that's mm -hmm. for sure. So you got Tim Wilson here still running good and solid. Looks like we're about Oh, well, you know, we might be all right. We're 6 minutes into his run. And he's coming up here onto the looks like Yep, coming to the finish. Okay, yeah. So just over six minutes there for Tim Wilson. Not sure of the official timing. We're still waiting for those results to come through. Yeah, I have Jason McNeil at a 618. I know that one. So 618 is probably going to be a pretty safe bet of the fastest time to beat during the day. I would say so. That's definitely going to be one of the times to beat, that's for sure. All right, now we got the real professionals on the job. Here we go. We got a real chase truck there. It's one of Roger Norman's old chase trucks, now score chase truck. Uh huh. Gonna get in there. They got some weight on that thing. That thing will pull right over. Yeah. As long as they're in four wheel drive. Yeah, as long as all four <laughs> wheels turn, we'll be all right. That, that makes a bit of a difference there. Big time. Yeah, that definitely helps. Back it up a little bit more here. Back it up, Terry. <laughs> Put it in reverse. All right. I don't know, man. At the end of the day, these guys are still having fun, <laughs> hanging out in the dirt. Yeah, it's probably not as much fun as they were about no, no, ten no, no, minutes no. ago, but it's no. still better than uh, mm -hmm. it's still better than sitting here. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> That's true. All right, there you go. All right, getting that thing back over. Now we'll see. Do they get in and they go for a finish, or they just take the easy way back? If it was me, I would still go finish because if you get some other guys that crash yeah. and can't finish, you're going to start in front of them at least if the truck's not too messed no, up. The problem is you know? for how long that thing sat on its side and all the fluids being upset the way they are, I would definitely take my time restarting that car. and You wait for the oil to get down. Yeah, and, and you know, for how long it's been tipped over, I would, I would try and get towed well out of the way and pop the hood on that thing and kind of do a little bit of preventative before you go firing it up again. Poor Keith Smith there. Looks like he went for a ride. Yeah. <laughs> it's Not never fun crashing in those to. things no no unless you can pull it off uh, alexander style and that, hancock style and put it back yeah. on the tires and keep driving that was a good one yeah, you know it, it really what do you say it cost them maybe six seconds yeah maybe. six or seven seconds yeah yeah, yeah. it'll so, be interesting to see what their time is and absolutely. how much that six or seven seconds really affected them. Because yeah. depending on where they are, it might not have affected them too much. But yeah. in a qualifier like, like this, six seconds is quite a bit. Oh, probably, yeah, right? it's detrimental to your time. Yeah. All right, so most likely score has stopped the mm -hmm. next starter car we haven't seen, right? Yeah, so they're probably good. waiting until this mm -hmm. is clear to start somebody else. Yep. The now, the, the car that went after them, who was that that we saw? Tim Wilson. Tim Wilson. They, they didn't really look like they got affected by it, right? So that's the gamble you take. So I'm sure you could probably protest and negotiate for a rerun. You could absolutely yep. ask for it. 
But then you risk having a worse run. Something to really think about. Like you had a clean yes. run, you got all the tires and wheels on the truck, body panels are on, you got across the finish Call line. Call it done. Call it done. Yeah. So now if they've got, you know, their finger on the pulse of where they're at on time wise and if they're like, Hey, you know, we're right there in that pack, I'd leave it alone. Yeah. Now Just if they bobbled them. something later on and maybe, you know, had kind of a rougher run that maybe we didn't see on camera and you're like, Hey, let's risk it, then you go for a rerun. Yeah. But then you're really risking it. So it's kind of tough there with that one. All right. Well, while we're waiting for them to get that clear of the track, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. You guys won't miss any action. They haven't started another car yet. So uh, we're going to go to a quick commercial while they clear that uh, crashed car off course. And then we'll be back in just a few minutes. the trails less traveled and reach your destination quicker with king's new mercedes sprinter 2.5 oem performance series kit these 100 percent bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment superior ride quality and external finned reservoirs with wide range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality see why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your sprinter kit today We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? The finishing touches of any off-road vehicle are the things you add to make it your own. That's why we've developed a full collection of over 70 Polaris engineered accessories specifically designed for Pro-R. Polaris. Think outside. You ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, I got that right turn. We're good. Uh, meet up at the compound and group up. I turn four. Yeah, for sure, dog. Good little driver, straight on through. Welcome back, everyone. We are here for the Method Race Wheels San Felipe 250 qualifier today Woo. for the King Shocks 37th annual San Felipe 250. It's a mouthful. But there we, we go. It. I think I got it out. That's it. <laughs> we're here. We're qualifying. We are qualifying. This is the trophy truck spec class that is going right now. We have 45 of them signed up today. Going to be a new record if they all show up. We are uh, a little bit over a third of the way through, probably about 20%, 30% through. So far, we have Jason McNeil, we think, with the fastest time with a 618 that we've seen so far. And uh, we're still waiting on times for a lot of the other people, but we do know that Jason McNeil is the fastest so far with a 618. That's it. And it looks like on track, we've got George San Pedro in the uh, Mason truck. I believe he just put the Fox Live valve on that truck, which is very exciting. Cool technology in the sport. It's something we love to see as things advancing and just new tips and tricks and things that help you get quicker down the dirt. 
And uh, I think we have the 290 uh, on the track as well, or maybe it's a 241 of Beal. Yeah, there's another one right there. So just before break, if you guys didn't see, we saw the uh, Maverick Gaunt entry, the 258 with Keith Smith. Uh, they rolled over in a corner, and they got stuck on their side for a while. So they had to stop qualifying for a little bit. They got a recovery vehicle out there and got them flipped back over. Uh, we did see that they got going again. It looked like they just pulled it off to the side, and it looked like they were going to call it done. So that's, uh, that's what the little slight delay was here, but now we're back at it, and more qualifiers headed out on course. It's three minutes. Uh, three minutes start split is what, the, is what the split is between them at the start. So every three minutes, we send one car off. Yeah. Up next, it looks like we've got a Tisco chassis there up front. So I'm wondering if that's a 299 of Charles Durant's. Let's we'll see. Did we miss the 290? The 290 and the 241 is what we're looking for. I believe I saw the Sendero real estate truck out there, the Geyser truck, so the 241 of Beal. Yeah, it's like the bluish color mm -hmm. truck, right? Yeah, Blue and the one I haven't seen like is the 290. Uh, a a Cedro Ochoa, which would be unsure what his chassis is because it says yeah, Chevrolet. It I don't see any. I see a lot of Chevy 1500s out there, <laughs> right? But I don't see very many Chevy 1500 race cars. <laughs> no, not on the race course. <laughs> and it, it looks like it's getting a little bit more crowded out there. I think some people figured out right? where this uh, spot is and are making their way out there. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the beautiful Sia Cortez there in the background. San Felipe is one of the most. Uh, I don't know. This is one of the most picturesque race courses. Is always San Felipe. You got some epic terrain out there. You got the beach just behind you in the background. The weather is usually perfect for this race. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. You can see everybody's just in uh, in a t-shirt and shorts out there today. Some dudes not wearing a t-shirt. So, some dudes not even in a t-shirt. <laughs> probably more than one dude by now. We're, we're, yeah. we're at uh, 10 o'clock now. We got some dudes that have been out there for a while. Probably a few a few drinks deep at this point yeah. <laughs> and uh, having up, lots of fun. Yeah. Hey, weekend starting. You know, let's go. It's so a great fun. way to kick off the 2024 race season. You know, San Felipe hanging out, watching some qualifying, relaxing. Yeah, it makes it for a lot of fun. There, you can see that this course is pretty tight and technical. We, there's not a lot of wide open there. And there you go. There's the Beal entry we were talking about mm -hmm. right there. So that is Stephen Beal in the 241 entry. So that means that uh, that's either the 290 in front of him or the uh, – it's probably the 290 in front of him. I think so, yeah. If they started. If they started, We didn't correct. get a start camera, the 290. So that car right there – is mm -hmm. Charles Durant's. Yep. That is the 299 for sure right there. So that's a team too. You know, they've been working through it. They've been getting faster and faster. Like I said, they're always there at the finish line. They're always there at the start line. And that's what it takes us, is just consistency. And just getting better and better and just gaining a little bit more speed every time you drive that car. And it's cool to see these guys just working their way up the ranks and getting themselves up into that top 10 spot. Fly with caution. Next there on the line is a 205 of uh, Joe Deleuze. Uh, that's a Spencer Lowe Racing Motorsports truck. Uh, they're cranking these chassis out. I think they have five of them on the racetrack now. Um, very impressive chassis, very impressive trucks. The craftsmanship's great. They seem to do very well. Um, I believe the 205 truck finished everything last year. It's debut season, and it's the first truck that they've put together on the racetrack. And I was going to say, they're, they're kind of a little well. bit newer to the spec truck game. Obviously, yep. Spencer Lowe Racing has been around a long time. Spencer mm -hmm. Lowe Sr. back yep. in the day, and then this is Junior now yep, that's, exactly. that's running the Spencer Lowe Racing now. Yeah, and he's built plenty of plenty of race cars and plenty of very competitive things, and it's cool to see him doing his own thing and doing, uh, doing very well with it. Yeah. Um, very impressed by, the like I said, the craftsmanship of the cars and and it seems, they seem to be holding up and doing well on the racetrack, so it's just an added bonus. Got the 299 there of Charles Durance. Yeah, see, that's the only spot where you might be kind of kicking yourself if you went for that big qualifying setup and eat some of your top speed, but then it gets right back in the tight technical. You really got to slow so, down for that corner. Huh? Yeah. That's well, where they yeah. roll that, yeah. if not. Yeah. Proof's in the pudding right there that you got to pump yep. the brakes. And now they're stuck. That truck is stuck there, I believe. Looks to be stuck. It, it looked like when they were, before commercial came back, it looked like they were stuck when they tried to move it. Yep. <laughs> well, that's never an ideal scenario. Right on the outside of the corner, too. That, they could very well get rolled onto where they're sitting right there. There is a potential for that to happen. We hope it doesn't, but it could. Yeah, definitely getting chewed up a lot. You can see the trucks are going much slower here. Very dry. I mean, you can see that the kind of the track deteriorating a bit and the two tracks getting deeper and deeper, and then it's just getting harder and harder to find that traction. Working good there through the big holes. That's a down south motorsports tuned truck. 
Sonny and DJ over there doing great things, making trucks work well in the bumps. I love that shot right there coming out of the tight stuff and just getting after it. Yeah, kind of throw a little sideways coming out of the corner, collect it back up. There you go, that is uh, the 205 Joe off the line there. So we're still working on trying to get times for you guys. I know that's all anybody cares about today, so hopefully we get some of those for you guys soon. You know, Jason McNeil had the top time last we knew with the 618. I'm trying to get you guys at least the top five as soon as we can. <laughs> Next there on the line is the 246 of Ben Hagel in the uh, Loomis Craft entry. Uh, these guys have two trucks running now. Uh, they just had a new like, Blitzkrieg GFO built chassis. I believe, I'm trying to find the number there for that one, would be the 245. So that could get a little confusing. We've got the 246 and the 245. Yep. They look the same, same wrap same, job, same, same colors, <laughs> same everything, uh, different chassis, but from afar they do look very similar. Um, so it might get a little confusing for us here commentating and talking Perfect. about these trucks, but cool to see both those guys out there racing, uh, two competitive trucks, because some competitive guys. they got a solid team of guys behind them. So I'm excited to see how their season unfolds. Yeah, that's that S-turn right there that I thought would have gotten straightened out a little bit more. I'm really surprised people are blowing that corner right there. It must be a lot slip, more slippery than what it looks right. like from here. Obviously, we're not the one in the truck right there, but I'm surprised people aren't cutting that left in a little bit more. It's cool to see that 205 Spencer Low truck in those throwback Spencer Low racing colors with the red and the white and all that kind of. Back to like the, the Nissan school. days, yeah. It's just, you know, I'm a big nostalgia guy, so I love seeing stuff like that. That's, we're gonna call that the gaunt corner for the rest of the day. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, we got some sound. There it is. Yeah, those old, those old drop-offs are getting bigger and bigger. And it's wild to see, like we watched Jason McNeil go through that section just on the pipe, throwing it down there, landing down in the hole, ripping it around. Yeah. So. Ah, a little bad line choice there, landing it in the bushes. Ben Hagel should be taking off here any minute. I know they've had this truck up and going. I know they raced it last season. Um, always fine-tuning and tinkering on that car. That's a KDM Shock Technologies tuned truck. Uh, it's just getting quicker and quicker. Every time they run it, they figure something out. They get faster and get faster. So well, that's good. It's better than getting slower That's slower. it. Yeah, that's the game of the you game. Making making quicker. Progress. Sometimes you go backwards. Sometimes you make a change and things don't go so well. Oh, I'm sorry. We jumped over the 238 of Elijah Kiger. Oh yeah, he's he's back in his uh, one of his own trucks. Yeah, he was racing with someone else for a little while. I think maybe to take a race off or here and there. Haven't seen his truck out there for a little bit. Yeah. He's back in his truck. Well, no, they were te they teamed up there for the thousand. It was him, McNeil, and Davis all running together. Yeah. So that was in Davis's time. truck, was it? Or was it? I forget which truck. I don't remember whose truck. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, all three of them have Tigers. Tisco trucks, so it's hard to tell which one's which. Yeah. It's just who wants to race theirs that race, right? still looks like there's not too much a little bit more than we started earlier but i don't think the dust is a factor because looking at these trucks we don't see much dust in front no right? i think it, it's definitely enough time gap between them where things are kind of settling back down and it's not really making any big change really. yeah yeah that corner definitely keeps getting wider right yeah. <laughs> look at how wide that thing is now from when we first started way wider Here's that SEO. Yeah, I'm sort of surprised people aren't going left right there. There must be a berm or something that we can't see that's keeping people from going so far outside there. Or they're just playing it safe. Yeah. Playing by the rules, you know? Yeah, somebody's going to straighten that thing out. <laughs> Somebody watching this is going to straighten it out. All right, so here we go. Here, here is an unofficial top five, I just got told. Top five unofficial times. So we have Jason McNeil at a 618.113.
So 618113. In second, we have EJ Herps with a 618.939. So 618.939 for the 263. In third, here we go, Tim Wilson. Well, hey, he's always yeah, up there, there in the it top is. Five, right? So Tim Wilson currently sitting in third with a 634.023. So Tim Wilson in third. In fourth, guess who this is? Kay Garcia. Hancock. Really? The rolled truck. No way. The rolled truck is in fourth position unofficial <laughs> with a 643.763. So Ryan Hancock, Jordan Poole, rolled over on course, <laughs> landed on the wheels luckily, kept going, and is currently unofficially fourth halfway through, overall. Almost and we're halfway, about through, halfway through the field, and a lot of the fast guys <laughs> have already gone, honestly. Impressive. And then fifth, rounding out the top five, is going to be Brent Fox, the guy that races every single race ever, with a 649. Man with the miles. Yeah, 649.796. All right, so that is your top five. So we got Jason McNeil, EJ Herps, Tim Wilson, Ryan Hancock, and Brent Fox. Top five unofficial times right now and that's Impressive. the only times i have for you guys at this point so i apologize for everybody else hopefully this gets fixed and we get some times for everybody soon that is uh, eli kiger right there out on course in the coastal mm -hmm. racing entry yeah you can see he's got a Starlink on the roof that's it well, where's his footage at yeah maybe they're holding it they yeah, we need some live in cars in today yeah. these guys with starlinks you got to be getting us live footage here we just saw that 246 of Ben Hagel take off the line there in the Illumicraft. So you think Ben and his brother have a, a side bet? I would assume so. I know they just, like I said, they just finished up that uh, Bliss Creek GFO truck. I know they got some testing time in it. I saw them out in the desert with Mary Gold and doing some shock things and some motor things and some dyno things. So brand, brand new truck. So I would think brand new truck on the track i'm assuming they're just looking for results just just finishing things and just getting around the track clean and un unscathed yeah but i mean they're brothers so i'm sure there's a bit of competitiveness there going on and those times that we read are like i said unofficial there, there is a large gap there to me that looks a little mm -hmm. bit weird between some of them yeah. so we'll we'll see later because ryan hancock there with a 643 and then Tim Wilson, 634. I thought there would be more people in between. In the gap there, In between yeah. there. I mean, that's a 10-second that's a gap almost, so that's mm -hmm. a pretty big gap. I'm getting word here that Elijah Kiger's got a right rear flat potentially, so we'll see if that cuts the camera. I had somebody down there, saw him go by. Well, this is them right here, right? No, that's Hagel. So, this is Hagel? Yeah, okay. they got that, like... Oh, the orange on the roof? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like a, a tan and brown and orange. Yep. All right, into the gaunt corner. Oh, that poor truck is going to be wrecked. Right? There's, everybody's oh. roosting it there. Someone's going to probably roll right on top of it. Oh. <laughs> I wonder why they're leaving it there. I wonder why they didn't pull it out. It must, maybe it's real soft in front of the truck, too, and the chase truck yeah. couldn't get it out. That's kind of weird to leave it, leave it sitting there. Yeah, un unofficially, I have Cade Garcia at a 624 from a different timing. So yeah. that's, that's what I'm thinking. That, that top five is going to be... A little bit unofficially, sure. you know, for now. Next off the line, let's see if I don't mess this one up. The 201 of Mitch McNeil. We saw Ben go, so next should be Mitch McNeil on the 201. Uh, another McNeil entry. Fast family. Do what they do out there. It's a different McNeil, right? Not in Cousins. The, the cousins, yeah. yeah not, cousins. not Jason's kid. Yep, Cousins. Going on here, got Hagel again. With the stairs, stairs that jacked up that way. Good and clean still. There All is right. Mitch McNeil off the line at the 201. He's off the line, and then we do have some social media clips coming in. So if you guys are out there and you tag, uh, you know, at Score International, here we go. That's one of the Herbs trucks finishing. Here's a rollover, it looks like. This is me, Ryan <laughs> Hancock, in the corner. Yep, just like you said, caught that inner corner. And that's exactly that's, where you don't want to stand I was either. Say, you never want to stand on the outside of a corner for that exact reason. 
There's another angle of it. Oh yeah, right up on the inside. Darn. <laughs> Listen to what Off-Road JW says. Don't stand on the Do outside of those turns. Do not stand there, people. Get yeah. out of the corners. Two sixty-three there of EJ Herbs. That's the same clip again there, the 263. So if you guys are out on course anywhere today or during the race, you can always tag Score International on Instagram and they will uh, be able to see your videos like that. And we're back to Hagel's here, one of the Hagel brothers, the 246 here. Mm -hmm. Ben Hagel. Back on course, Ben. And we are getting towards the towards the end of the entries. We've got about, what, maybe 15 left maybe? Uh, yeah, yeah. Seventeen. Seventeen seventeen or eighteen more. Perfect. And then after that we're gonna have the trophy trucks go out on their site lap with the trophy truck legends. They're all gonna get a site lap, so that's gonna take a little while. We'll probably take a break in between there. Uh, they're gonna go out, they're gonna do a practice lap, everybody gets to go. We have let's see, how many trophy trucks do we have? We have six trophy truck legends. And then it looks like we have thirty-two on this list here. So thirty-two regular trophy trucks and six legends. So that's thirty-eight signed up that's a lot of trucks on the list that's a lot that's about uh that's almost as many as we have spec trucks here. that's a lot of racing cars on a track holy smokes that's a lot of people still to uh, go today it's the beginning of the year everybody's trying to figure out where they want to go racing and you know when it comes to points and all that you want to at least enter the first race of every series so people who are looking at potentially racing a whole score series you don't want to miss the first race of the year and this being it everybody's going to be here see where they land for points overall and yeah see if they want to you know chase the rest of the series all the way through to the Baja 1000 at the end of the year Another clip here coming out of this corner. I love this corner right here. Yep. Nice. Old Mitch McNeil there, ripping around. A good looking body on that truck. That's a, it's a clean McNeil racing truck. body. Yeah, it's an older geyser truck. So they're running oh, one spare today. That's, that's, a a G, that's a G6. That's a newer truck. I thought that was their older truck. So that's a newer geyser truck. Must be new to them. The, uh -huh. the easiest way to tell is the angled spare tires. Correct, right? if yeah. The, if the yeah. rear tires are angled up a little bit in the center, that's mm -hmm. a G6 chassis. Yeah. And they're only running one, so that's a little bit of a strategy. Some people will do, they'll take either a tire off or no tires or fuel you know, change, how much fuel you put in the car. Exactly. Probably so, not, no one's going with a full tank of fuel today. Unless you want to play head games, you can do a full tank of gas and no spares, and then make everybody who has right? half tanks take all their spares off, thinking you've got some think. sort of advantage, and then they're out there <laughs> not making traction. Lots of head games could be going yeah. on. If Robbie Gordon was out here, he would be doing some of that for sure. He'd probably have a shoot <laughs> over the front of the car again. I'm getting a message from Mario Gutierrez saying that uh, Mitch McNeil got that truck delivered to him at 5 a.m. this morning. Brand, brand new, brand new geyser. Brand new. Yeehaw! I well, love it. Speaking of getting a brand new geyser truck delivered to you at the race, Jesse Jones did that a few years back, and he went on to win really? the race. Yes, All right. in trophy truck. He did that at a San Felipe race. I'm assuming it was a geyser. So it was a geyser, of All course. All right, so maybe yeah. there's some good juju there towards the McNeil family. Get Mitch to get out there and have a good run and keep the thing nice and shiny. Got the 285 of Justin Davis there on the line getting ready to take off. He's another one that we have to keep an eye on for a top qualifying spot. He'll be just as quick as any of those guys. And Plenty of time down here in Mexico, plenty of experience qualifying between short course stuff, desert stuff, and all that. Just overall a fast dude in the driver's seat. So if he can keep this thing in one piece during the qualifier and, you know, not land himself in the gaunt corner, it'll be all right. Yeah, the gaunt corner is the one corner we've seen close Which has got to be right there. frustrating a little bit because the 240 here of um, Chris Miller is actually the old gaunt truck. Oh, yeah, that so was the their other old truck. truck yeah. just went by clean <laughs> past the new truck. Correct. Sitting outside the corner because they rolled there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but you know, that's desert racing. It's all right. You got 250 miles to make up for it on Saturday. You're going to have a rough start in the back, but at least you'll know where you're at all day long. Every yeah. car passed is a position gain. So, got a solid feel of the truck still there stacked up in the back. Um, looks like we got Mike Marsal coming up next after Justin Davis here. Yeah, so Justin Davis, another one that's always pretty easy to spot. Always green, green truck. The Green Army is the name of their team that they were given a long time ago. They, these guys have been around a long time. They've raced a lot of different classes, class 10, spec, 
they uh, had class one. Mm -hmm. They had a uh, sixteen hundred car, I think, or a ten car. Ten car. Yeah, they, they've mm -hmm. raced a lot of different classes. Justin yep. and his brother. Yeah, I believe they won it in a class one car. They won the Baja one thousand one year in a class one car. There's Justin Davis there off the line. Easy to spot. They got shiny fluorescent green Tisco truck there. Yeah, always easy to see that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's another one. He's a fast guy. He's got to keep. You just got to keep the car together, and he'll do all right. All right. So Justin Davis is off. Like you said, next is going to be Mike Marsal. That's one of the newer newer racers to the uh, to the off road scene as well. Yeah, this is his second season in, and like I'm sure we've all seen it through socials and through everything. He's doing it right. You know, he's got he's got two spec trucks, one to pre run in and one to race in. Um, a lot of guidance there from Evan Weller Racing and their team up there of kind of how to, you know, navigate through desert racing. They put the efforts into testing. They put the efforts into pre-running. They take their notes. They're down there doing all their homework. They're really, you know, crossing their T's and dotting their I's when it comes to racing. They've got a really solid team of people behind the truck, everything from, like, drivetrain to shock packages and everything. It's just a very well-put-together program, and you can tell he's in it to, for the results. He's in it to win some races and do the best he can. Yeah, and it's exciting to see. Yeah, it definitely takes a lot. Like you said, you can't just go out and get a truck and go out there and go racing. You yeah. got you got to have the whole the whole package, mm -hmm. especially the longer races you do. San Felipe is a little bit easier, right? You can get away with like one chase truck potentially at San Felipe, but most of these guys are going to stop once. Sure, no, nobody's going to stop more than once unless they yeah. have a problem. Exactly, you, you could do San Felipe on one pit stop. So if you have a perfect race, you could go out there, stop once, and be there. But any race besides San Felipe, you need a massive crew and massive yes. support to be able to have any chance at winning. And the, the 236 entry of Mike Marsal has Evan Weller's name on there again. So like we were talking, put your <laughs> name on there. The two vehicles that Evan does take care of and programs that he helps with, he's got a very good program going up there and see me taking care of people's race cars and always yields good results. So it's yeah. cool to see them doing well. And, and they have a Hudson Hall in there. Oh, the legend. You guys the one the, the only. Day on race desert remember Hudson Hall. He did it, though. Legend. He's here. He he's it. doing it. He's in a race car every weekend. He's, he's doing it. It's like, awesome. I love it, it. He went from folk legend on a website to actually legitimately being in legit race programs yeah. in cars. It's he's, pretty, pretty yeah, awesome He's story. got more desert racing miles <laughs> lately than I do. So <laughs> Me too. Power to him. So. Yeah. Pretty, oh, pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I, always a, if always you want a, a funny story, just Google Hudson Hall race desert, and I'm sure the, the thread <laughs> will come up, and you guys can go back and see the Hudson Hall uh, story uh -huh. from back in the day. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's always cool. Like, so if anybody's interested, you can go check out the Mike Marsal stuff there on the internet with Spy Racing and see all the helicopter footage and the pre-run stuff and all that. It's just it's very interesting. So. Fly with caution. Justin Davis, like you said, making his way around. And then next, Mike Marsal, followed by Troy Stone. So that's not a name I'm too familiar with. Are you familiar with Troy Stone at all? Huh? Looks like a, I don't remember seeing that name before. And he's from Bend, Oregon, huh. also on here. So, uh, yeah, Stone Motorsport, Stone Roofing. So that's a, a little bit of a new name, possibly, to score racing. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with it. Yeah, I'm trying to read through the sponsor list here. Nothing really stands out as to, like, what the truck is or chassis is. So I'm curious to kind of see what we got going on there. Up at the start. That is Mike Marsal right there. Easy yep. to spot that truck. Bright orange with the Spy mm -hmm. uh, sponsor on there. I believe he's friends with the owners of Spy or something to do with Spy. Some connection there. Yeah. <laughs> there, there we go. It's always interesting to me when you see sponsors of companies that are non-endemic, how they, uh -huh. you know, what the relationship is to off-road racing. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, like you said, it's either their company, their family's company, mm -hmm. or something, a friend, something like that. But cool, it's cool to see non-endemic sponsors coming out and being on the side of these trucks because it just helps the sport grow exactly. and get that much bigger. So it's hard to tell here with this 269 entry of Troy Stone. Body looks Tisco-ish. Roof looks Tisco-ish. But I've been wrong before, and I'll be wrong again. <laughs> like we've said before, Fish and I are just some dudes here behind in front of some cameras talking about trucks driving around in the dirt. So... Anything we say may be right, may be wrong, who knows? We have a little bit of experience here, but we're no experts. A great shot there, Justin But nobody Davis. knows different most of the time, so we're good. 
That's right. We're right. <laughs> yeah. We are right. <laughs> We're the ones with the cameras. We're always yes. right. <laughs> Justin Davis going pretty fast. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was one of the ones, remember, at the beginning we were picking picks. That was who I picked, uh, mm -hmm. you know, was going a little bit later that I thought was going to be pretty quick. Yes. So this will definitely be a top five time if he has a clean run here. I would assume. Can he knock Jason McNeil off the top spot is the question. I just want to know who's an accurate, I mean, I guess there with the Herps being 618s, it's like it's pretty accurate there, close to second. But yeah, it's going to be tough there. Jason's fast. Similar chassis here, uh, Jason McNeil on a Tisco, Justin Davis here on a Tisco. Oh, there's the Hancock corner. Still doing good. Missed that inner berm there. There it is. Sets him up good for that downhill right, back to the left. You gotta be safe here through around these corners with the drop-offs. Yeah, Earlier in the day, run. we saw Winslow get a little wild there. I believe it was that corner, put it up on the bike for a minute. But you got some seasoned veterans out here that you know they know the, the limitations of their trucks and they'll push it into that corner and they know it's gonna stand up and they're just gonna stay right there on the throttle. Yeah, they know where the edge is, mm -hmm. right? He's going to be coming into Gaunt Corner pretty soon here, yeah. maybe. There's Marsal there. Nice and planted. Looking good. So some of the biggest differences between these trucks, a lot of these trucks are rear cell, right? And some people have the cell in the middle of the truck. So Yeah, majority of these trucks are all rear cell. I'm looking here. I don't think there's anything on this entry list that's a mid-cell truck. Yeah, that's kind of a little older, right? Some people mm -hmm. tried that a few years back. Didn't really work as well. It works mm -hmm. better when the weight is back behind the wheels more. Yeah, it, it can be argued both ways. It kind of, a lot of it depends on the driver and who's interested, uh, who's wheeling the thing and what their driving preferences. I yeah. mean, the other weekend we had a mid-cell truck almost overall a race, and that was a mid-cell camber truck that did very well there. Yep. But that, you know... With Jurgensen driving, Jurgensen driving anything. I'm pretty sure fast. Kyle Jurgensen could get in <laughs> yeah. a freaking Pinto and go out uh -huh. there and set a fast qualifying time so, today. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, a lot of it's you know preference. It, when you the benefit to a fuel cell in the middle of a truck is that you don't get that big weight differential behind the axle, kind of manipulating the way the truck's handling. Yeah. Um, but then the benefit to having the weight in the rear is that it kind of works like a dirt bike. So anybody at home who's ridden a motorcycle, you know when you come up into some big holes or you want the bike to do something, you're going to lay back on that thing and you're going to sit back over that fender and get it to kind of hang the nose of the motorcycle. Yeah, carry it. Very similar to a truck. Yeah. So, And a lot of that's driver preference, driving style, um, shock tuner preference, kind of like what you have going on there and what you want the vehicle to do. And like we spoke about previous, it's just a game of averages. So. You know, you can spend all this time tuning your car for these giant bumps and these giant holes, but if you go to a racetrack that's only got maybe 20 or 30 miles of huge holes and the rest of it's fire roads, that's probably not the smartest thing to do. So you're going to want to set that car up a little bit differently, where I would assume a mid-cell car handles much better on fire roads, around corners and all that, more of a balanced feel from start to finish of the day. Yeah, that makes total sense. And like you said, it's all about the, the driver and what they what they like. You can take one, one driver, or you can take two drivers and put them in the same car, and one could be completely, you know, one could like it, one couldn't like it. Like, I know Robbie Gordon back, they always had a real loose truck, right? Like yes. The truck was always all over the place, super loose. But a lot of people would get in there and be like, what the hell, I can't drive this thing. Like, yes. You know, good drivers, too. Yes. But it's just different driving style for different drivers. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you're just joining us, this is the qualifying for the Trophy Truck Spec class. These are their timed runs right now. This is a five mile course. Your time today will determine your start order for Saturday's race. We have 45 trucks, spec trucks on the entry list. We're gonna see how many of them actually show up and qualify. There'll be a new record if there is at least 44 of them that start the race. Once these guys are all done today, or with this class, we're gonna to go to the Trophy Truck and the Trophy Truck Legend class. They are gonna head out on this course and get one site lap, basically a pre-run lap. They'll space them out a bit. They get to go mark the GPS. Then once everybody's gone, they bring them back, re-rack them, and you head out on your timed run. That might be starting, it was gonna start at around 11, but that's probably gonna start a little bit later with the timed runs, just because this is going a little late, it looks like. They're off the line, we got the 273, the Jordan Brenthal entry. Uh, Abdali Lopez is on the navigator list, so he may be driving that truck. I know he has been starting the races lately for them, so 
uh, at Valley Lopez. No stranger to speed, no stranger to Mexico. No, he's fast, fast. guy in the dirt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They took Kyle Jurgensen out of the truck. That was well, didn't take him out. He's driving with someone else now. Mm-hmm. But Kyle Jurgensen drove that truck last year. They put Abdali in, another fast driver. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely, he's won some races before. Yeah. <clears throat> so this will be a fast time if he has a clean run. Yeah. Try and catch eyes on the truck that's right ahead of him. It should be this one here. So as by our list, this should be the Troy Stone entry, but I'm not sure because that does look. Hard to tell here. We just gotta catch a number board on the side of the thing. Tight corner here, and you say if you look there, you don't really want to step out of that corner and land yourself in those big ruts. That might put a damper on your day. Yep, turns getting wider and wider. Solid heli footage here, drone footage here of the Jordan Brenthal entry, the 273. Kind of thinking we've got Abdali Lopez driving this thing. Oh, for sure it's Abdali because he posted a picture earlier and he was inside the truck. Well, there it so, is. Yeah, it's Abdali. Investigator there. Fish on the move. <laughs> That's the gaunt corner, but I didn't see gaunt. Gaunt's anywhere. gone. They're they gone. got him. They got him out. Oh, there he is. There Look they there. are. There <laughs> yeah. you go. In the flat. They didn't get very far. <laughs> they are moving, though, it looks like. <laughs> oh, there's the chase truck that went and got him out, probably. You can see it in the middle of the screen uh-huh. there. Same one that flipped him over earlier. So clean through the gaunt corner for uh, for them. Who do we have on the line here next? Uh, Jose Contreras, the 284, a Tisco truck. Not a name I'm very familiar with, but... Nonetheless, out there doing it. So you got the Nissan Frontier there trying to set fast lap. Truck bed right. full of dudes. Watch this. Hancock corner here. See if you can keep it all on all fours. Don't cut it too tight. We've seen what happens. Ooh, yeah. Nice and smooth in the true track there. Yeah, the corner's really not, there's nothing tricky about it. It's just if you cut it inside, it's got that yeah. little berm, that, or the little mound that kicks mm-hmm. you up. Uh, yeah. You can really see it in those fan videos that they send yep. in. Absolutely. And yeah, like we mentioned earlier, if you've got any videos out there for qualifying or on race, they would have you just make sure you tag Score International and we'll put them up here and we can critique your film, filming style. <laughs> <laughs> right, off the line. That was Jose Contreras, did you say? I the so. Yeah, then? that's the next on my list. Yeah. It's got a Tisco name there on the back, but it almost looks like an older Jimco chassis. Turn to the home point. The single 284. Spare there. Yep, 284. It's hard to tell there. <laughs> 273, Jordan Brenthal entry with a Dally driving. There it is. Down and quick. Man, those poor cars in that corner we've been talking about are just going to get wrecked. Right? It's just so wrecked. So much dust there. It's the dusty, yeah. silty mess. And it's only going to get worse once yeah. we put the big boys out uh-huh. there with uh, a 1,000 plus horsepower. I think the <laughs> only people making, making good money this weekend are going to be the car detailers down there in San yes. Felipe. They're, they're very, very popular. Yeah. All right, so we got another Brenthal truck there on the line, it looks like. Yeah. That's going to be uh, Arnold Gutierrez. Arnaldo Gutierrez. Arnaldo. There's an O there at the end. Oh, well, there is. Yeah, that's kind of the fun thing here about Spectric Racing. Like, Fish and I are very familiar with the majority of the people that race off-road. Like, I feel like in one way or another, we've talked about somebody or seen somebody or met somebody. But then when it comes to spec truck stuff and the new season and a new year, there's all kinds of new faces that show up, and it's just great to see that. Just fresh blood into the sport, fresh insight as to everything. I could just help grow it as in general you know the next person coming in could have some great wild idea that might change the sport and flip it on its head you never know exactly a little hung up there in the gaunt corner oh oh what's going on here the camera angle's a little off where's the truck at to the right hard right oh okay yeah they just understeered real deep in there and then bit out of there 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 they are (laughs) hard to tell with the dust yeah a little deceiving from that angle yeah 
273 entry up the alley driving. There you go. Somebody, like I said, no stranger to speed, no stranger to doing well down there in Mexico. So watching his lines are definitely worth doing. Somebody who'll probably, I would potentially land himself in the top five, I would think, qualifying. If he has a clean run, which it seems to be he is doing so. Gotta dodge through all this stuff nice and tight. Yep, there you go. That's a quick way through. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the 273 pretty high up there in that qualifying race. Yep, 284. Jose Contreras. Yeah, I do believe that is a Jimco chassis. Yeah, a little different than what was on the entry uh -huh. list, huh? Yeah, it says Tisco. <laughs> Maybe Tisco maintains it. Maybe John over there takes care well, of the Well, the, the spare in the middle it. is what kind of gives it away, right? Yeah, yeah, and just the shape of the body. That's an old, older Jimco body. Or like yeah, the bedside for Jimco sure. Body. Yeah. You can tell. Uh -huh. I'm not quite sure whose truck that is. I'm sure I'll get a text message here. And yeah, if who's it minutes. used to be? <laughs> <laughs> That's so-and-so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, get a little squirrely yeah. there. A little back and forth. Yep. Get it well down for the drop. Yep. Into the hard right. That hole's getting a little bigger, too. Uh -huh. all, all these holes are getting yep. bigger. It's going to be exciting. Oh, that's a that's a new line. Bonus line. Okay, so that line just got burned a in not them, too yeah. long ago, right? Yeah, yeah, we just watched Abdali do the same thing, cut some corners off, which, yeah. you know, that's all part of it. You know, if you took that note when you were out and did your sight lap, let it rip. So the question is, is anybody sitting in their trophy truck right now watching this that sees that and knows exactly what corner that is and <laughs> is smart enough to put on the GPS, hey, go inside? <laughs> I would assume most of them would be. I would be trying to. Got to get me one of them Starlings first, though. Yeah. Well, that guy's got a Starlink, too. Look, at almost everybody has a Starlink now. You can tell you see the white square on the roof, uh -huh. or some people put stickers over it, but yeah, you see yeah. a little square like that on the roof, that's your Starlink. Mm -hmm. Dude's in the passenger seat checking his Tinder, hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> right? That is a plus. If you break down, you have Wi-Fi, so you can just watch the videos and stuff now while you wait for your chase crew. Right. So that, right. that is a big plus. You can call home, see how the wife and kids are doing. Yeah. <laughs> you might be able to order some Uber Eats or something. Fair, fair. Depending on where you are. Yeah. Call Auto Club, have them come pick you up. Next on the line should be the 250 of Dustin Swanson. Uh, another Tisco chassis prepped by Jake Velasco Race Prep. Uh, same thing I said before, beautiful truck, beautiful prep. Jake, you know, definitely crosses T's and dots his eyes, does things right. Full service shop there. Um, just down the road from here. Just literally, yeah. We from had to make we a are. turnaround. <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> yeah. there. So. Uh, yeah, this will be a fast one. Yeah, and that's a big part of it, you know. It's like driving the truck fast and being quick in the car is one thing, but you need to have the support crew and the support people on the backside helping you get around the racetrack because you got to stop the thing and you got to fuel it. you got to put tires on it. you got to repair it when things happen. And having somebody who's quick at that and understands mm -hmm. that is key when it comes to off-road racing. He is from Honolulu, Hawaii as well, so like uh -huh. you said, so that's a little bit of a distance. Maybe one of the farthest people here today. Sometimes we get people from... Uh, I got in Australia. We got, we got, got an Australia a, there? Yep. Australia, yeah. There we go. That's definitely the farthest then. Yeah. I was just going to look down the list. Yeah, no one... <clears throat> There's always a few different states here, a lot of Arizona. Got an Iowa. That's a little bit random one. 264 of Arnaldo Gutierrez. I believe they were 10 car guys. They were with the GT Racing on the door. They raced 10 cars for a long time. I do believe they still do. You do see kind of a lot of 10, 10 car racers. If they want to step up, this is the next class mm -hmm. to go into, right? It kind of absolutely. makes the most sense from going to a 10. If you want to go to a truck, yep. this is where you go. Yes, absolutely. Quite the climate change from being in Hawaii to out here in the middle of the desert in San Felipe, you know? Yeah, a little, a little bit different. <laughs> Probably it doesn't rain as much here as it does in Hawaii. No. Two sixty four working its way through the tough stuff there, putting it up on the bike, using the berm as the brakes. And you see right there a perfect example of, you know, you push too deep into a corner and you, you lay the truck there in the stuff and it just takes so long to get your speed up and going. So it's so important to just find the smoothest route, the straightest line from point A to point B when it comes to qualifying and try not to lose too much momentum, especially in the spectrum. Great shot here from our drone operators down there. They've got a long day ahead of them flying those things. Oh, man. The, the drone operators? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. 
You know, these guys all do a great job nowadays. It is cool to see all these camera angles. You know, back in the day, you used to have a, a hel helicopter was the only way you get yep. anything from the sky, really. And that mm -hmm. is super expensive. <laughs> it, it runs out of fuel. You got to go to the airport to fill up or you got to go somewhere. Not, not very, you know, economical not when, when you can all. buy a drone for under $1,000 with a couple batteries and go out yep. there and shoot all day long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get a team of guys, somebody to re-battery it up so you can land it, take yep. a drink of water, re-battery, throw it back up there. Yeah provide us here at home and in the studio with great shots all day long so we can chit chat about it and distract you from doing work. <laughs> yeah. This here should be the 274 entry of Jason Babcock. It's next on our list, I'm assuming. As stated before, we've been wrong. Could be wrong. We'll see when we get a number plate. We're about three quarters of the way through spec truck qualifying. We've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more trucks to go. And then like we efficient said before, we're gonna let the uh, trophy trucks go out and do their sight lap. And get them stage up to let the elementary trucks run. So this is the 212 is what's the number on that truck. So it should be Bud Pecoy. So we're wrong there with the 274. There we go, Pecoy. Yeah, Bud Pecoy. Race with Cameron. Bud Pecoy, so the sun maybe? Bud? Well, it's usually, uh, maybe. <laughs> they're all bud. There's the junior, they're, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? So I got 212 here, Brenthal entry. Do a little digging. So we may be out of order here a little bit with the list that we got going on. Because we still have the 274 of Babcock to go, and then the 245 Ethan Hagel and the new GFO truck. Excited to see that thing go. It looks like there's, there's Hagel right there. Should be the 245 entry. And like I said, this is a truck they just finished up. I think they retested it like last week or so. Um, it's a GFO built truck. Uh, Keith Marigold tuned. Evan Weller handled all the diffs and everything. So they got a really solid team of guys behind this truck. So as long as they can keep their heads level and get the thing around the qualifying loop, I expect some pretty solid results. Uh, the, the Hagel family always does well on the racetrack. So. Yeah, this will be the side bet too, right? They're, yeah, the, the brothers. The yeah. brothers definitely have a bet. I know their, uh, I think their grandpa is the one that supports their program. Yep. Yeah, Hagel Lumber. Yeah, so they own the lumber yard up there. Cameraman here walking up the track. Just sightseeing a little bit. Yeah, so only a few entries left, like you said. Yeah, like eight or nine, I think, is where we're so, at. So they actually, they swap, did you already say this? Maybe they swap positions, it looks like. They looked like it, yeah. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah so it looks like the two went out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then Ethan there. And I apologize, guys, we don't have any, uh, any times for you guys. Trust me, I wish we did. We, we think Jason McNeil's the fastest un unofficially with like a six. Uh, hey, there's the gone entry up and moving, so that's a good sign. Looks like nothing detrimental happened to it, so get it back to the pits, get it cleaned up, knock all the dust off, straighten things out, and get it ready for Saturday. That's probably the best move, in my opinion. The body doesn't look that messed up on this side, even. No, it looks pretty the good. Side. There's the Dustin Swanson, the 250 truck. Still moving, still making up ground.
good looking truck. Cool air vents there in the hood. Nice and smooth through here. And you can tell, you know, you see like the track change from earlier this morning where you kind of see a uh, deep two track grooves around everything. And these guys are kind of almost slot carring around a lot of this stuff. Whereas earlier in the morning, you had a little bit more creative freedom when it came to the racing track. You can kind of pick your own lines, pick where you wanted the car to be in the corners. But now you kind of get what you get and you just got to be as fast as you can through that section, knowing that everybody's dealt the same deck of cards. So. Digging deep there in the two track. And it, it's kind of, trucks are moving good there through that section, which is promising for everybody in the future. It'll be cool to see the all wheel drive trucks run through there. You know, having that extra set of tires and wheels spinning and biting and pulling you through, it's going to be pretty substantial time difference, I would think, around a course like this, as tight as it is and turny as it is. Definitely. Huge, I, huge yeah. advantage. Yeah. It's gonna, this is going to be a hard one for like, you know, every now and then you get a qualifying lap where you look at some of the spec guys and they're pretty comparable top five, top ten of Trophy Truck qualifiers. But I think this one's definitely going to be an all-wheel drive run around for sure. Yeah, so as soon as the spec trucks are done here, they're going to send out the Trophy Trucks and the Trophy Truck Legends on their <clears throat> site lap. We are going to take a short break, or it might not be short, we're going to take a break. Uh, between them and then we will come back on when the trophy trucks are going to start their timed lap so if you're watching this in a little bit and the feed goes down don't worry we will be back once the trophy trucks start their timed lap just going to be a little bit of a break and uh, while they go out and do their site lap we'll try and find an exact time for you guys on ap approximately what time they think they're going to start their lap kind of depend on when these guys are all done here yeah. so there's a 245 ethan hagel so the brand new GFO truck, looking good, looking sharp. Good looking body on that one, I believe that's a McNeil body. I think that's a 244 of Oliver Fomente, Cisco truck. Same thing, cool wrap, cool colors, cool layouts. Looking good and sharp through there. Yeah, holes are getting a little deeper. Ledges are getting a little bigger. It's going to be cool to see how everything unfolds later on today. Like I said, after when the aluminum trucks get out there and do their thing. That's a sharp looking truck, I'll tell you what. Very truck looking off road truck. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, like it's you gotta got, look good, it's right? It's got some good lines to it. It looks it looks like a pickup truck from up here. At least if you look good. Oh, then it's good. Oh, Where's he going there? Yeah, there's a couple bonus lines there. I think we're trying to make a decision split second. That was interesting. I yeah, wish it wouldn't have cut away right yeah, there. Yeah, there's was, three options. I was kinda curious as yeah. what was gonna happen. I I don't know I, where he went there. It looked like he was on track to take that right line, but like <laughs> I said, maybe there was some discussion earlier on in the driver's meeting about certain spots and that may have been one of them. Next there on the line we got the two oh three is Scott McNeil. Uh, I believe that's the old Mitch McNeil entry. So it's their older geyser truck uh, out there running two trucks. So like we had talked earlier, you know, maybe this is something for points. You know, you got two trucks in the stable. San Felipe is a little bit of a manageable race. You go run both trucks, see which one gets better, you know, finishing results, which puts you in a better spot for points. Definitely. <clears throat> definitely something to think about. If, uh, yeah, if you want to go for the championship, that's yeah. definitely a great way to if do that, it. Make sure yeah. you get a good start to the year at least. Mm -hmm. If that's your end goal, if your end goal is that big trophy and points championship, that's the way to do it. Is big when it's hard to race, you know, teams that have more than one truck or that are going to team up for the Baja 1000, for example, no, nobody really races their own truck solo anymore. Exactly. Right? Nobody, I don't think anybody's done that in one of these or a trophy truck since. Uh, I mean, Larry Rossler did it before, but true. you know, BJ is the last person to do it and win back yeah, in the day. True. So nowadays, you know, you're probably going to team up with somebody for the thousand. So yeah. the question is, who's going to be driver of record for the yeah. thousand? Who's no, yeah, whose number know, who's, are we using? Who's out of the points mm -hmm. that doesn't really matter? And you're probably going to go with the driver on your team that's highest in points. Yep. 
and then you might use their truck too because their truck's probably obviously doing pretty good if they're high in points. Absolutely. So that is Absolutely. Oliver Flamente there. Yeah. All of that strategy. Oliver's team has quite a few entries also. They have everything from 11 cars. I think they have a 10 car or uh -huh. one car. Yeah, 10 car. I know they got this, the trophy truck spec. So one of the teams that's uh, from Ensenada and, uh, you know, has a few different entries in the, in the race. I'm surprised to see this many different people not wearing gloves. Right, right. right. It's, it's kind of, I mean, I know some people like the feel, but at, at the same time, gloves are a big, a big deal. If, if your uh -huh. car is on fire or if you're trying to pick cactus out of your suit or something like that, I mean, having a driving glove on is definitely a Just changing a tire. Plus. Changing a tire. You get wheels are tire. so hot. How, how hot is a wheel when it's, been, or a tire yeah. when it's flat and you try to change it? Yeah. You'll, you'll burn your hand. Yep, like, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised by what we're seeing today. Next on the line, as per our list, we got the 224 of Miles Wyatt from Brawley, California. This should be our 42nd qualifier, I believe, next on the line. Yeah, so Oliver, I'm being told they have their class 11, a class 12, and a spec. So those are the three cars that they are racing in the score series. It's a busy day for the pet pit guys, huh? Well, the pit guys, yeah, between <laughs> pitting a spec. Oh, what's this whoa, line? Whoa, whoa. Whoa, where's he going here? That's, I think that's that same spot we just saw uh, that Hagel go through. Yeah, that was the right line. You're supposed to stay to the left is what I'm thinking whoa. is going on here. So we're way off track now. Uh, yeah, where are they at right here? behind the spectators. This is not even part of the course right here. They are, yeah. That was a big mistake right there. That's gonna hurt you big time. Yeah. I don't even know if they know where to go now. Yeah, they follow the GPS, should be over here to the left quite a ways. A couple more lines over, oh, there, there it is. is. Darn yeah. it. That, that was not good. Nope. That's, I believe that's that same section we watched Hagel make that split decision, whether he's gonna go right, middle line, yeah. or left. So what did he do? We don't know, right? We don't know, yeah. But I would. it looked like he was setting up to go left. So it looks like those two left lines would send you down the racetrack, and that right line just went into outer space. So definitely want to stay away from that one. See if we can get a number here on the side of this truck, but it should be the 224 of Miles Wyatt from Brawley, California. Uh, no vehicle manufacturer listed and no sponsors listed so got the, the lone ranger out there yeah right Two or three, taking some shrubbery with them. Yeah, Wyatt Motorsports there, good clean truck. Scott McNeil doing a solid job here, keeping the truck in one piece. Running through there, making some good speed, picking a good line. End of the day, that's what it all comes down to is line choice, making sure you're quick and nimble through everywhere, carry your momentum all the way around the track. And Yeah, of course, definitely getting a little bit more torn uh -huh. up like we thought. His berms are getting a little bit more built up. Yep. Honestly, for the all-wheel drives, that's just going to make them faster, really, though, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, give them something to lean into yeah. and dig out of. Looks like he's about to lose a left rear spare there off the rack. It's coming loose on the strap. Yeah, <laughs> strap's a little loose. <laughs> We could sway on the outside too, it looked oh. like, yeah. Oh boy. Got a good looking truck. I believe those are McNeil racing bodies. I always enjoy when an off road truck looks like a truck. It's my right. favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good corner there, get it woed up, drop down into the wash, back out and around. Keep moving. All 
All right, so is this one of our last trucks here? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. Did we see Miles Wyatt at the 224? Yeah, we, we saw 224 go. We have 209? Not confirmed the 209 or the 267, so I would assume this would be the 209. And then we had a late entry, possibly the 257, we were told, was going to be the last car at some point. Yeah. Something to do with a Mike Walser uh, team or something like that. Uh huh. So we'll see here. We'll see who this car is once they go off the start line. It looks like a, a dark colored truck is what we can tell so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks like we got a little W picking up now, a little wind going on here. Yeah, it's actually, good. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really good for the afternoon racers coming up. Yep. And not that it was a factor this morning, just mostly for the spectators. I don't think any racers got held up really. No, I don't think so at all. Look there in the distance, we got Adam Householder lining up, see all the blue and the orange back there underneath the score. Yep, 10. he's the first one listed as first in the trophy truck class, so he will be the first one to go out for his practice lap. Yep. So we know we're definitely almost down to the last trucks when you see the first truck in the next class mm -hmm. lining up. Which, uh, in a two-wheel drive truck, which is usually dominated by all-wheel drives, that's a great position to be qualifying in. Not having too dug up of a track, being able Very to make true, some right? traction. Yeah, you got a little bit so. of berms built up, so you're not blowing uh -huh. out the corners. Yep. And it's not too dug up yet nope. that you're really spinning the tires a lot. Exactly. All right, so who's this here? Let's see if we can catch a number on the door. It'll either be the 209 or the 267. Or the 257. That was hey. the last entry. Like I said, so, or maybe we're wrong. <laughs> well, that was the last one we were told that was a late entry. Sure. So that should be the last car that we just saw right there headed out on track. We, we did not see the 209 or the 267 start. And it very well be that they didn't really care about qualifying. Sure. And they just wanted to go in the back. Uh -huh. So just because they didn't start today, you can still start the race. Yeah. You just, you'll go behind everybody that qualified mm -hmm. today. It's so, a 224 entry here. Miles Wyatt out of Brawley, California. Looks like a looks to be a Tisco or I'm sorry, a geyser chassis there. Yeah, it's got these holes that are getting bigger and bigger. Just gotta watch out for those big old rocks right there. Woof. That's something to think about too, is when you're coming around these 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 turns and stuff, as you're getting more dug out and dug out, it's bringing the rocks out of the out of, from down below. Oh boy. There we go. Gathered it back up. All right, so we have an unofficial, unofficial update still. So it looks like Jason McNeil is most likely still in the top spot with about a 618. And then EJ Herps is going to be second with just a little bit higher, 618. <clears throat> it looks like unofficially we have Jordan Brenthal that is showing as a 625 right now which would be Epdali that we were talking yep. about, Epdali, uh -huh. so no surprise there. However, I do believe that Cade Garcia is going to be in there with around a 624, <clears throat> yeah. according to some timing that I have. So I, I'm going to say that Cade Garcia is around top 3-4. Uh, Jordan Brenthal with Epdali is going to be next. Tim Wilson and then Chase Swanson is also now okay. in there with a 639, all, all unofficially, of course. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll have to wait until later for that. Hopefully we'll get some time so we can get you guys some form of a leaderboard before the unlimited trucks go out to go run. Yeah. Um, that way we can give you guys a little rundown on how spec truck qualifying went. And we do have some more social clips, so thanks to all of you guys that are sending those in. So we got a few more social clips. If you guys are out there, send it to Sport yep. National. There's that would be the Gaunt. Yeah, the Gaunt tip over. Yep, so that's Gaunt, the Gaunt corner. So this is just a recap of earlier in the day, the car is going off the, the line. This was our trophy truck spec qualifier. A couple shots throughout the day, you see one of the Herps trucks there. Both those guys were very fast. See some of these corners earlier in the day were really slippery. This is the Alexander uh, Ryan Hancock roll right there. They got lucky, landed back on the wheels, only lost a couple seconds. We think they're somewhere around the top five, but we don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. they didn't lose too much time. Tanner Russ there, 289, his new geyser truck, doing well. Good looking truck. So it all comes down to you. Gotta make sure your truck looks definitely most looks important. Good. <clears throat> it's like a was that a Minecraft uh, little it's kind of what it looks thing like. on there? Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. 
is the Jason McNeil. So this is your top qualifier, we believe, unofficially. But no surprise, obviously, we were expecting that. <laughs> Jason McNeil has that red number 200 for a reason because he's your class champion from last year. I mean, you can just see the pace that he was running is just uh, insane. Here's Tim Wilson. This is also one of our top five trucks, it appears. He had to slow down there a little bit for Gaunt that had rolled right in front of him, but it didn't really cost him too much since that's a really slow corner anyways. Mm -hmm. And with a top five run, I think he was happy with that. He did not take a rerun. You can see they got, they got the Gaunt truck flipped back over. Got it fired up, had a little bit of oil in there. That's normal. And then they got going again. They just pulled it over uh, after that. That's a 294. And uh, wow. yeah, that was a look at earlier. All right, so this is, uh, this is our agenda for the week. So today, obviously, qualifying is going. Tomorrow is tech and contingency. Starts at 8 a.m. We got the moto race start on Saturday at 5.30 a.m. And then the four-wheel race start is Saturday at 7.30 we have to check on that. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's showing there, though. And then here's some, uh, here's some more social clips. Looks like you guys are watching us on your TVs. That's what's cool about the YouTube. Everybody has a YouTube app on their TV nowadays. Yep. So you can be chilling just like that at your house and watching, uh, watching qualifying down in the middle of San Felipe. Looks pretty nice. It does, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kind of want to be there. <laughs> All right, so we are going to take a break now. The trophy trucks are headed out on their site lap in a few minutes. We will be back to bring you guys more qualifying at noon. So come back at noon. The feed's going to go off for a little bit. Don't worry, you won't miss anything. We will be back on before the timed runs actually start. So please join us again in just about an hour. Come back, go get, a, go get some lunch. We're going to get, grab a quick snack, and uh, we'll be back at noon with your trophy truck qualifying. That's it. Thanks, guys. Go further, explore the trails less traveled, and reach your destination quicker with King's new Toyota Sequoia 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with optional wide-range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sequoia kit today. We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? The ultimate adventure tool, with all the storage to hold even more adventure tools. The all-new Adventure Ready Bronco Sport.
Go further. Explore the trails less traveled and reach your destination quicker with King's new Mercedes Sprinter 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with wide-range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sprinter kit today. We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? The finishing touches of any off-road vehicle are the things you add to make it your own. That's why we've developed a full collection of over 70 Polaris engineered accessories specifically designed for Pro-R. Polaris. Think outside. Yeah, I got that right turn. We're good. Uh, meet up at the compound group up. I turn four. Yeah, for sure, dog. Good little driver, straight on through. Ensenada, for those who are looking to expand their culinary horizons, a place where the adventures of the sky, valleys, and oceans come together. Ensenada, the capital of Mexican wine. <laughs> 